This is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series and the National Championship Game. Nebraska, the winningest team of the decade. A mean machine that can bash, dash, and slash its way to big yards and to opposition pay dirt. But last week, it was the longest yard it didn't surrender that kept their record clean. Texas A&M constructs its own ground attack and has a wrecking crew defense they hope can build to a win. A sold out Kyle Field. They are looking to maroon out the number two team in the country, the highest ranked club that's been in here in 15 years. A battle of Frank Solich and R.C. Slocum as North meets South in a Big 12 battle. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to College Station. It's a rematch of the Big 12 championship of a year ago. In fact, that one was all Nebraska, 54 to 15. But the Aggies and their fans feel that Nebraska might be just a little bit vulnerable, Gary Danielson, after what happened last week. Oklahoma State holds Nebraska to 73 yards rushing. I mean, you know, when's the last time that happened? Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's the last time they were still picking corn by hand in Nebraska. <laughs> you know, you said North versus South. It's the Big 8 versus the Southwest Conference. This is tough football. And let's talk about a fullback when we're talking big, tough football. Nebraska's going to bring in Joel McEvicka. McEvicka is one of the best fullbacks in football. And when Nebraska is successful, Joel's successful. Last week, only nine yards. A&M will have to stop this guy if they're going to stop Nebraska's offense. Well, he'll either carry the ball or he'll lead you to where it's going to be, and he'll have company today, won't he? He sure will. That win, one of the outstanding linebackers in college football. Everybody knows about him. He finds the ball. He makes plays. Number nine will be on the fullback all day. It's going to be a real treat to watch this one. Dent was just named one of 12 semifinalists for the Lombardi Award. The Wrecking Crew hoping to have a ball at Kyle Field today. We'll kick it off in a moment. You want the proposal tomorrow? <laughs> no problem. Ah, the self-employed. Happy, free, masters of their own destiny. They'll get it done with the right help. Where's Jason? He's gone out on his own. He can't do that. He hasn't finished his training. He, he just, just likes, likes to hang out with entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. We can't let them think we're too small. Let's go. You've got the knowledge. You've got the internet. Just show them what you know, and you can compete with the big boys. We know that. Put your charts in color. It'll focus the conversation. All our charts are in color. Now that looks professional. It has to. This document represents us. Wait. Jason, they're doing fine. But they have no support staff. Son, they have Xerox digital copiers and printers, software and service. Let's go home. I really did think that Xerox only worked with big businesses. That boy's got a lot to learn. Keep the conversation going. Share the knowledge. The digital document company, Xerox. Oh, Peter Lynch. I'm Susie, your stress technician, trainee. Not to worry. Here we go. Wow. Under control. This reminds me of the stock market. The cash will shoot up without warning. Sure can. And then drop. 25% or more. Four times since 1970. So stressful. You know, Fidelity can help you better prepare for the market's ups and downs. For the free guide, investing in volatile markets, call 1-800-FIDELITY or visit fidelity.com. Whoa, you're stress-free. For the first time, Ford's got this national truck season thing, and people are getting a little crazy. Well, if I had the money, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd go downtown, buy a Ford truck or two. Crazy about a Ford truck. Truck season's got folks excited because Ford trucks offer them things Dodge and Chevy can't, like the only full line of four-door super cabs. Crazy about a Ford truck. I'd say Alan Jackson's day job is safe. National Ford truck season. Check it out. Yee! Welcome to our studios in New York. I'm John Saunders. Out to your game in just a moment. Top five teams all in action, all on the road today. Although Ohio State had an easy time with the Illini, 41 to nothing to score there. Texas has the lead over Oklahoma. The story here, Ricky Williams, 139 yards right now, as he is headed to becoming the number one player in the history of the NCAA and rushing the football. He is number three right now, passing Herschel Walker. We'll have more on that at halftime right now. Out to your games. A sold-out Kyle Field, but 12,000 less seats 
than normal due to that construction you saw in the end zone. And this is a Texas A&M team that's 4-1 and one on the season, but that one lone loss was the kickoff classic to Florida State. They played great competition, Gary, the last eight games. They really have played a lot of teams ranked very well. And the more you play these types of teams, the better you're going to get it. There you see it. Florida State, UCLA, Nebraska last year haven't won a lot of them, not since 1989 against LSU when they came in here number seven. Have they defeated a top ten team here at Kyle Field? This town is definitely ready for this football game. AM won the toss and deferred. Nebraska and Joe Walker will receive and watch out for him as Leckler hits a line drive that's fielded at the 29-yard line. One of the up men and oof, paid the price. Was that Sheldon Jackson? Sheldon probably wasn't expecting to get hit quite this early in the ball game. Actually made a very nice stop on that one and saved a lot of yardage. That he did as we get set to take a look at the Chili starting lineups. First, the big ones up front for Nebraska. It's a young line with the exception of the senior Josh Heskew inside. Sherman and Guest for the guard. Robin Jolch are the tackles. Matt Davison gets his first start. Wiggins and Sheldon Jackson, who we just talked about. D'Angelo Evans in the backfield. We saw him look great two weeks ago. Still a little bit hobbled. And here he comes on the first pitch of the game. And who else? That win makes the tackle. We'll see a lot of number nine today. Defensively for AM, Rocky Bernard has the most size of a small group up front with Edwards and Flemons. The linebacking core, you know about that win, but hey, Cornelius Anthony's not bad. The number two tackler with Holdman and Bradley. And the secondary, Rich Cody, a former walk on, leads the secondary and hits with Webster, Jennings, and Brooks. And there's the guys, Gary said. We'll see a lot of them today, and already he has one tackle in one play. Second down and 10, Nebraska. Newcomb pumps one way, wants to throw back a screen the other, and the Aggies have that one smelled out, and Newcomb's got to throw it away. That's going to be intentional grounding on Bobby Newcomb right there. Threw that ball away. Head referee standing right there watching. They're going to march it off. Texas A&M doesn't give anybody anything on opening drives. As you saw, a look at the numbers. you got to go back a year. And here's our referee. Be intentional grounding. Intentional grounding on the offense. Lost it down. Third down. Brings up third and ten. It's one of the toughest penalties in college football. It's from the spot of the throw. You tack on extra yardage. Obviously, it's going to happen behind the line of scrimmage, and you lose the down. I mean, that's a huge loss. It's going to be what? 25, at least 25 yards here for first down on third down. And I don't think. Nebraska has that type of play in their in their offense. RC Slocum 55 and 1 at home. Already the folks in it for their defense. Third down and 29 Nebraska. They're going to play it safe D'Angelo Evans but he bounces outside. Brandon Jennings made the stop from the secondary and a three and out, Nebraska. Very interesting that time for Mike Hankwitz, a defensive coordinator for AM. He kept his base unit on the field, suspecting a run on that play. AM loves to use their nickel defense, but against Nebraska, he says, let's just stay at home and play the run. Chris Taylor dropping back, waiting on the punt from Bill LaFleur. High snap. LaFleur gets it away, and it's a dandy. Field it at the 24 by Taylor. Weaves his way to about the 33. Almost looked like a late hit at the end of that game, that uh, run back. Brandon Bosch is the guy who came in there late. No flag. And it'll be AM starting from its own 33 yard line. Our Chile starting lineups for the Aggies. Cameron Spikes has been a tackle most of his career. He's moved inside, and he and Haimuli make a great set of guards. Chris Cole is their big play threat. Spiller and Campbell, two excellent tight ends. And in the backfield, Randy McCown, his first start, uh, his second start, and his first win as a starter came last week. Paul and Big Jamar Toombs in the backfield. And there's McCown. Didn't put up big numbers last week, but good enough to get a win over Kansas. First down from the 33. Here's a toss to Hall. Big in the middle of the field. Dante Hall on the cutback to midfield and down to the 45-yard line of Nebraska. 22 yards on the opening carry. I think the AM players were unanimous when talking about the Nebraska team of a year ago. They said Nebraska had intensity and focus 
beginning of that game, we could not believe the level that they played at. They said, we're ready for that level this year. We want to start off the game faster than we did in 97. They certainly have here today already in Nebraska's end of the field of the 45-yard line. First down. Now the inside handoff to the fullback, and that's not booing, that's Toombs. Big Jamar Toombs goes for about six yards against the Nebraska defense. That's led by Mike Rucker, who saved the day against Oklahoma State. Kaiser Warren and Kelsey join him up front. The linebacking core, Jay Foreman, had a career-high 13 tackles last week. Brian Shaw and Eric Johnson flank him. And in the secondary, Joe Walker, talk about saving the day, a 73-yard punt returns, what was the deciding factor in that game last week. Sweeney and the two Browns join him in the Nebraska secondary. It's second down and four. Two tight ends set again for the Aggies. You'll see that most of the day. Here's the toss. Dante Hall's got the first down. And he's down near the 30-yard line before Mike Brown can wrap him up. Right now, some excellent holes being opened up by that front wall. An a and front five, but let's add two, the two tight ends. Right. Here's Spiller and here's Campbell. They go a lot of two tight ends, and those are the two guys that I think are going to be the key to this game for a and &M. If they can handle those outside linebackers and rush ends, Kelsey and Rucker for Nebraska, Brad, we saw how they dominated Washington with those outside edge rushers. a and is going to put the big guys on them. First down at the 30. Cole, the motion man. McCown wants to throw to it. Pumps once, and now he'll bring it down. Safely gets back for a loss of about a yard. He wanted to go to Chris Cole, and he was covered, so he pulled it down and did what he could. It'll bring up second down 11. Well, one of the advantages of going two tight ends is you run a balanced offense, and you can run at either one of those outside linebackers or rush ends for Nebraska. One of the disadvantages, though, is when you try to throw the ball, you only have one wide receiver. Right. <laughs> and if he's not open, not many alternatives. You know, you got that progression, one, two. You just, just got one. Stop at one. Uh -huh. Second down 11. Out of the eye, the second man threw his haul, and he is wrapped up this time. Foreman hit him, so did Johnson, the two linebackers, and Kelsey was there to make sure, and it's going to bring up a third and long situation for the first time today. I think one of the most encouraging things if you're AM trying to look at Nebraska films is not the closeness of the game last week, but was the success that Oklahoma State ran between the tackles of Nebraska. I'm sure Charlie McBride has saw, seen the same film. Right. <laughs> Nathan Simmons had a huge game, and most of that was done on the inside last week. Third and ten. A count from the gun. Plenty of time, but he has it intercepted. Down the sideline. Ralph Brown now cuts back to the middle of the field. Brown still on his feet. All the way to the 40-yard line. McCown, the last time he was intercepted was 25 games ago. He should not have thrown that pass. Have not had an interception, as you said, this year. The protection up front against a zone blitz. You see the outside guys, Johnson and Shaw, come. Cowan has plenty of time to throw the ball and step it in. But Brown guesses to the outside. He's got a little help inside. And Cole that time just did not call. Chris Cole didn't finish his route, and that helped on the interception for Nebraska. Well, Brown had a pickoff against AM in the Big 12 championship game. Last December, he's got one here today. The Aggies dropped Newcomb for about a half-yard loss. Warwick Holdman, the outside linebacker, makes the hit. Ralph's first of this season, but as I said, he got one last December, 10 months ago, in this same matchup. Yeah, Ralph Brown, two-year starter corner for Nebraska, started every game he's played in Nebraska at cornerback. So the threat by the Aggies, thwarted by the Nebraska defense. We showed you that graphic that they hadn't given up any points in the first quarter. They still have it, and we've just under 10 minutes remaining in this first stanza. Bobby Newcomb wants to pull up and throw and does, and he's got his man open. Out of bounds, about the 31 is Matt Davison. And he's going to be a yard or a yard and a half shy of the first down. This Aggie defense, as you see, the second drive already. They have not allowed the drive to start in their own territory. And that one was by interception, so that's a little fluky, too. Well, I mean, they're all inclusive right there. It just shows you how, how very few times they turn the ball over in this right. program. Only four. That's the fifth time this year. Two tight ends set now for Nebraska. Bobby Newcomb has a look. Third down, a long yard. Makovica, the up man. Newcomb going to keep it, and he's going to go down. 
Nice job defensively by Holdman again. Warwick Holden originally began his career as an inside linebacker. Moved outside to what you know most people who followed Aggie football would know is the Reggie Brown spot, the speed spot in this defense. Great pursuit inside, and boy, I'll tell you, Bobby Newcomb doesn't seem to me to have that explosiveness that he had earlier in the year. He, he looks to me to be about 75% right now. There's Holdman's numbers. You can see five tackles for loss, including that one that's brought up a fourth down and two, and Nebraska will go for it. They're three out of four on fourth down conversions this year. The late pitch to Evans. Hit in the backfield, and down he goes. Brandon Jennings with a huge hit from the secondary. has never seen option football. The Southwest Conference for years was the home of option football. And you can tell R.C. Slocum and Mike Hankowitz, who has faced Nebraska 15 times in his career, is ready for the offense. Stopped by Bradley, the end man on the honest line of scrimmage, number 40, forces the pitch, and up comes Jennings to make the play. What a play, what a defensive stand. Speaking of the offense, it comes back on the field for the Aggies now as they take over on downs. Dante Hall waits for his block. Brought down by Lauren Kaiser after a pickup of four. Hall had a 177-yard game and three touchdowns in the win over Kansas last week, and he had one of 60-plus that was called back because of penalty. Here's one a guy more, that can pick up some yards. One more look. Here's Jennings right here. He's an alley runner, forced the pitch, rush him wide. Everybody in their lanes. Great defense. It helps when you can run from the second. Second down and six for a and m From its own 38, Hall again. And a penalty marker. I think we're going to have a holding call on the inside this time. Looked like maybe Seth McKinney. Big pile up in the middle. And Steve Juszczyk is our referee holding Texas A&M. Well, one thing Steve Craigthorpe said, the new offensive coordinator for A&M, is you must stay out of predictable situations when you play Nebraska. Here's Steve right here. Guy calling the plays was the receiver coach a year ago. He's using the same wristband that the quarterbacks are using on the field to call his plays. And what he said is, A&M is much like Florida State. They run from the outside, they got great speeds, but in long yardage situations, they'll play that fire zone, and that got that interception right. on that last third down play. This is a second down play, but a long ways to go. 14, Sir Parker in there, tailback in motion out of the backfield. McCown, quick drops, gonna lay out a long ball on the side. The fingertips of Aaron Oliver. He may have had a touchdown, and there's a flag down at the 41 yard line. Let's see if they get Sweeney for interference. I'm not sure, but I think it was on Oliver with the interference that time. Let's see which way they call it. You yeah. are correct, sir. That was a perfectly thrown ball, and Aaron Oliver right here is the matchup against Sweeney to the outside and just as the ball is thrown see him give the push with his oh boy that was kind of inconsequential if oh. you ask me especially since he coughed it up but you know the official that called it was right on the Nebraska sideline and you know he had some of those coaches and players in his ear yeah he's got one in his ear right <laughs> there's now. another one that, that really was an inconsequential push right there by Oliver considering he dropped the ball they thought they had long yardage before. It's getting worse. They've got to get all the way to the 44-yard line for a first down. One of the things that Steve Craigthorpe and R.C. told us is we're not going to have a lot of chances to make big plays. We have to capitalize on those chances. There was a chance right there. They got nothing from it. Second and 29, way back at their own 15-yard line now. Give it to the first man through. Only about three yards for Jamar Toons. Joe Walker made the stop. And R.C. is still upset. <laughs> well, uh, you know, that, that's, that's really the game plan today. Keep it nice. Keep it simple. Run the ball between the tackles, just like Oklahoma State did. They stayed patient with it. But then when you have an opportunity to make the big play, make it. Those are unforced errors, and Oliver had an unforced error right there. They're not going to get that many perfect throws from their quarterback, and that one was. He'll probably throw one here, too, but more than likely a safe one. Third and 25. There's up. And he's got his on the sideline. This is going to be a touchdown for the Aggies. Chris Taylor. That's 81 yards. 
That's where the kissing. Well, you weren't suspecting to get a lot of kissing against Nebraska, but maybe. Who knows? Randy McCown, you said you're not expecting a lot of big plays and great throws. Well, so far he's thrown three of them. Two have been great ones. Picture perfect. 81-yard toss on a third and 25. Russell Bynum for the point after. Aggies. As the construction workers back there had their helmets on too, and no doubt are cheering for Texas A&M. 7-0, the Aggies in front. Steve's band had its first big break last night, so they packed up the only four-door compact pickup out there, Ford Ranger, and headed out of town. This can't be right. Trust me, it's gonna be great. Only to find when they hit the stage, something was a little out of place. Them. It seems the only thing tougher than Steve's Ranger was last night's crowd. Four-door Ford Ranger, built for tough. This is Lusk, Wyoming. Cows outnumber people here 100 to 1. The thing that isn't apparent about Lusk is it's wired. Lusk has strung fiber optic cable for the future of high-speed internet. The schools have 320 computers for 500 kids. Home businesses on PCs are common. Why? They're practical people. They want to talk to the outside world using technology. They want to save their ranches with technology. They want to talk to the kids who've left and keep more kids from leaving by having the technology. They want to save their small town and keep it exactly the way it is. And they're using everything they can think of to do that. Technology is a tool. Software is a tool. These are the dreams it's made for. And that's why we make it. He made you scream twice. Now he's warning you. Wes Craven presents Don't Look Down, the Halloween event at Die For. <laughs> first touchdown allowed by Nebraska in the last nine games in the first quarter, and it was a big one. 81 yards to Chris Taylor from Randy McCown. The first touchdown, I might add, ever for Chris Taylor as a collegiate player. You think he's a little bit happy? <laughs> Also, as that graphic said, uh, Nebraska had not given up a point in the first quarter of this season. Leckler's kickoff. Football around at the nine by Joe Walker. And Walker will not make it back to the 20. One more look. Here's Chris Taylor. Here's Chris Cole right here. Here comes the route across the field. A lot of things happen. McCown comes up and buys some time to clear the linebacker for Taylor. Nice throw, perfect throw in fact. But watch Chris Cole. It's what he doesn't do. Here's Cole right here. Watch what he doesn't do. He doesn't do anything dumb and clip right there. He judges Taylor has the angle. He's gonna score smart football. Nebraska trailing. Something that doesn't happen often. From their own 19 yard line, a fumbled snap by Newcomb. And he got back to the line of scrimmage and eked out a yard. Cornelius Anthony was there to make sure he wasn't going too far. Bad exchange between center and quarterback. Well, remember, Bobby Newcomb or Eric Crouch, neither one of the two starting and first and second team quarterbacks for Nebraska practiced on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Neither one got a lot of st snaps this week, and that knee has been bothersome for Bobby. I think, even watching him yesterday, I commented to you, and I didn't think he was close to 100%. He looked it against Washington, but he had been well rested going into that game, and he's been a little bit hobbled ever since. Second down and nine. Makovica, the first man, the fullback. And he got about three. Anthony again from the linebacker spot in on the stop. Well, there is some experience at AM against Nebraska. The coaching staff has it in Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator. This is the 14th consecutive year that he's faced coached against Nebraska offense. There's Mike. He was at Colorado and Kansas. Got a lot of experience with this offense. So far, the Aggies not intimidated at all by Nebraska. From the 24, Newcomb hit from behind. Royland Bradley. 
Bradley, the other outside linebacker, gets it. Roiland Bradley shifts to defensive end in the nickel look. That time, Nebraska was in a third and long. Hankowitz thought it was a passing situation, went to his nickel package. Nebraska is very varied in their offense, have a lot of things, but handling the nickel package, there he is at the end man of the line of scrimmage, coming around the corner, making the play. Boy, this is a and team. You could sense it yesterday and Thursday watching them practice. They were ready. They were focused. They were at least going to match the intensity this time in Nebraska. Ten guys up against LaFleur. They put some heat on him. This one floats to Taylor, who's got the big play already today. He'll take it at the 42, his own number, and goes down at the 42. And a penalty marker flies down as well. I think we're going to have the halo call. Two yards or six feet. <laughs> I heard that put differently the other day. I love that. That was TNL. Yeah. Just... <laughs> Illegal block in the back from behind on Texas A&M yep. is the call. He had his two yards, Gary. Yes, he did. And there's, there's the, the push right from behind. And RC having a chat on the sideline with the man that had the illegal block, Sean Coriat. Familiar name to Aggie fans. His older brother was a great player here. Illegal push in the back on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Even with that, the Aggies have the lead and the ball back when we come back. 4.53 left first quarter. Long ago, an inventor came up with the assembly line, allowing a few people to make a lot of something. It was the model for efficiency. At Chili's, we pride ourselves for our inefficiency because we make each of the Big Mouth Burgers by hand, grilled one at a time by a person. And when you taste for yourself how good they are, you'll appreciate all the time we've wasted. Chili's Fresh Grilled Big Mouth Burgers, monuments of inefficiency. Relax, kick back, rest easy. Not the first thoughts that come to mind when investing on your own. But working with our financial advisors, you'll feel differently. Every client's ambition should be our ambition. Their dreams, our dreams. Isn't it reassuring to know that whatever your goals in a complex world, someone will be looking out for you? We measure success, one investor at a time. My name is Dennis Porter, and I work in the Ford Dummy Lab. They build it, we crash it. We don't care about the damage, we care about the people. Our testing exceeds the government standards. Ford has more five-star rated vehicles than any other car manufacturer. We go that extra mile to make sure that our cars are safe. I'm proud of that. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built for tough. Bud Light, with a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Chili's, a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. And the document company, Xerox. Keep the conversation going. Share the knowledge. AM and with a touchdown lead and the ball back. 4.53 remaining first quarter. A long stretch hand off the Hall. And Dante gets swarmed under after he maybe got a yard. Dante Hall is a very interesting player for AM. Freshman and sophomore year he averaged right around seven yards per carry. Mm -hmm. Was kind of struggling and came out in the paper kind of sheepish, sheepishly saying, I need the ball a few more times. He got a 36 attempts last week <laughs> and he broke it out for 177 yards and all of a sudden, that average is looking like it is today. Five on the year and 6.5 today. The last one only got him a yard. Second down and nine. He'll try it again. And this time, a much better result. He just bulls his way for a little guy that time out to the 40-yard line. Dante Hall and his mom and dad looking on. All right. When you got the hat, you got the son's number I up really there. Like You're styling. I really like that. That was a nice look right there. He's got the game. I know he's not listening to us. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> That's the Aggie network, I would assume. <laughs> Third down and two. 
Hall already with 46 yards on seven carries. And from the 40 yard line, they'll toss it to it. Cuts up inside. It's going to have to be a tough two. I don't know. I think he might be a little bit short. Very, very close. AM has been very successful on fourth down this year, going numerous times, but not against this type of talent. I'd be very surprised if RC did not punt the ball here. And not from their own 42 yard That's right. line. And here comes the punting unit. He's got one of the best in the country and Shane Leckler who comes in third in the nation in kicking and he's had so many pooch punts this year. He says I'd like to just stretch my leg once. Well he's got an opportunity right here. He I sure think. does. This is the perfect distance to, to punt from. It's like a full wedge. You know 120 yard wedge right here. Just full swing. Well that's not a very that's my swing. It's going to go all the night, get to the green. It's going to get to the green. He played the bump and run. It's pin high at the four. <laughs> 55 yard kick is how it turns out. Nebraska deep in their own territory when we come back. When you have it your way, it just tastes better. You guys are in here again? I can't believe this! You're always in here nursing your injuries. I have never seen such a group of cream pops in my life! This is football! I need guys that can play! Oh, man, I thought he'd never leave. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Hot dog, anyone? You're born. You die. In between, you work on cars. We should all be so lucky. MetLife financial professionals believe the best way to discuss your financial future, including mutual funds, annuities, and insurance, is face-to-face. -face. That's why we make house calls. Get Met. It pays. DC United. Columbus Crew. It's game one of the conference finals. Major League Soccer kicking and screaming live Sunday at 4 on ABC. The Bowl Championship Series is online with live action, interviews, game highlights, and live polls at ESPN.com and on America Online. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson with you at Kyle Field where AM leads by a touchdown and they've got Nebraska backed up inside its own five-yard line. Angelo Evans is in the end zone as he comes out with a handoff and he got only a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Terry Nichols met him. That win, part of that defense, and part of the 12 semifinalists now named today here in College Station as up for the Lombardi Award. And there it is. And Lombardi would love that win, I'll tell you that much. Six of the players on the list on offense, six on defense. And there's Tracy Wistrom, and his brother Grant won that award for Nebraska a year ago and ended up being a number one draft choice in the NFL. Second down and eight. Well, nobody home. Nobody Bobby home. Newcomb now going to try to do it on his own. Everybody went left. The wrong way. Everybody went left. Newcomb went right. We're going to New York and John Saunders. Right, time for the Burger King updates. Notre Dame against Arizona State. Jerry is jacked. You know he's got the bad shoulder. Doesn't look like it here. Seven yards to Malcolm Johnson. They jump on top. Seven nothing. That's where it stands now. Brad, back to you. That's where we stand as well, John. First three possessions, 14 yards on 10 plays, and still no first down. And that's something you can't say very often for a Nebraska team with 140 now left in the quarter. Third and six. Lucan. Oh, that was almost intercepted by Rich Cody. Oh, my goodness. Threw it right to number 48. He dropped it. But still, they'll hold, and it'll be a punt coming up for LaFleur <laughs> from his own end zone. Another opportunity now, you know, everything is going AM's way so far in the fourth first quarter here, but Cody has another opportunity 
to make that big, huge play with an interception there that can really break a game like this open. That's the type of things that doesn't seem like a big play, and you pat him on the shoulder right now, that now, but if Cody intercepts it, it's 14-0. Let's see if they try to put some heat on LaFleur. Nope, they're going to back up. They've got the return on. Chris Taylor waits on it from the 47. Taylor broke a couple tackles inside the 40, and he got a nice return to the 38-yard line. He's been the big play man so far today and has our only touchdown. And now A&M, a team that so often seems to win the battle of field position, is winning it here at Kyle Field today. A lot of, start at the 38-yard line. Right, a lot of A&M fans have been saying, you know, the offense has been less predictable than past years maybe, but still has not been effective so far in this season. Steve Craigthorpe said yesterday, you know, we've had a lot of games that we've been in control. We haven't shown everything. I think today we'll do better than the rest of the year. They've got a three wide outlook they're showing right now from the 38-yard line of Nebraska. McCown, deep right sideline, same play as earlier and knocked away beautifully. Nice job defensively by Erwin Sweeney. Coming up next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on ABC. A lot of college football regional action. Oklahoma State. And uh, Kansas State will do battle. Colorado, Texas Tech, Purdue, and Penn State in the Big Ten. Oregon, UCLA, a huge Pac-10 game. We'll be in Atlanta for Georgia Tech in Virginia as the Cavaliers have come in unbeaten into that one. Don't forget, check your local listings for the game in your area or call your cable or satellite company for what you can get on pay-per-view. One more look here. You know, you said Sweeney knocked it down. I think Chris Cole knocked it down. Yeah. To tell you the truth. Well, both of them yeah. did. They tell you, it was a play. Good coverage by Sweeney. And he just kind of flicked it away at the last second. And they're going to go away for a timeout here as McCown's going to come over, talk things over. With the Aggie sideline. And we're going to have a second and ten after we take a look at our Marriott moment. So far, the moment has belonged to AM today. In the Big 12 championship, a little bit different story, however. Bobby Newcomb was not the quarterback, Scott Frost was, but Newcomb did a lot of other things like catching passes. Returning punts, including this 40-yard return. Nebraska scored on all seven of its first half possessions en route to a 54-15 to Big 12 championship win and ultimately a national championship, a co-national championship with Michigan. And today, not the same kind of story. Already, they've had a couple of series they have not scored on either. In fact, they've had to punt from both, and they have only 18 yards. I think a little different A&M team, though. Going into that game, you know, Nebraska was very focused, but A&M since then, then has played, as we pointed out, UCLA and Florida State since that game. You get ready for this type of competition by playing good football teams. There's a good football coach, R.C. Slocum. Just keeps winning, doesn't he? Yep. The Aggies trying to get their 80th win of the decade. You talk about Nebraska owning the decade. The Aggies are not too far behind. The give to Hall, and Kelsey's got them all wrapped up. Loss of about two on the play. You talk about the great teams in the decade of the 90s. Nebraska on top of the heap. But look at if Texas A&M wins today, they move into that 80 bracket, joining Penn State, Tennessee, and Florida. Well, let me change one right here. Uh, there you go. They're tied with Ohio State. State. That's right. They already beat Illinois today. It's the only one I know about so far. Well, not a lot of finals yet. Texas was beating up on Oklahoma in the Red River War. Here's that third and long that AM has been very wor worried about. Nebraska does a lot of zone drops, and they're going to do it right here, bringing the outside guys, dropping the tackles. Third and 12. They do it. Noseman drops back. McCown drops back and falls, courtesy of Julius Jackson. Boy, it worked to perfection. Yep. You called it. The big guys drop back, and the smaller guys at 235 sack the quarterback. The biggest difference in football since when I played the now in 12 years. This time Jason Lohr right here is going to draw the block from the center and then drop back into coverage. Watch how he does it. That means the center who's going to block somebody. I got you, I got you. No, I don't got you. All I can do is help. And all of a sudden from the corner, Julius Jackson comes in and sacks the quarterback. That is the biggest difference in football in the last 10 years. As a blocker, all you can say is look out at that point. That's right. And the officials stop play here as the quarter comes to a close. The quarter, though, was Chris Taylor's for a touchdown at 7 nothing Aggies. The right people, the right parts, the right prices. Quality care for all value days at participating Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers. 
for Ford, Mercury, or Lincoln cars, Motorcraft shocks are just $69 per pair installed. On Ford, light-duty trucks, just $99 per pair installed. For the care your vehicle deserves and the parts it needs, bring it to the folks who know it best. At your service, quality care. I hope I see you there. At BASF, we don't make the boat, we make it faster. We don't make the safety seat, we make it more comfortable. We don't make the studio, we make it quieter. We don't make the golf clubs, we make them more powerful. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. State Farm presents Rules of the Game. We're talking about the runner being downed by contact. In this play, is the runner downed by the tackler? I'm grateful that Michael Garcia is in our lives. State Farm, Mike Garcia speaking. We had a house fire, a house burned. That was a tough day. He didn't treat us as a policyholder. He treated us as a neighbor, as a friend. I gave him a check right away. We went from there to putting the pieces back together. He's not a hero in the sense of a, a sports hero or a movie star. He's a quiet hero. He looks out for everyone in the neighborhood. It's gone from being a slogan to really being my way of life. We're talking about a runner being downed by contact. In this play, the runner is not downed by contact as his knee did not touch the ground. He may continue to run with the ball. Rules of the Game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Set to start the second quarter at Kyle Field with Gary Danielson on Brad Nessler. 7-0, the Aggies lead. Stadium was moving there as in between quarters they do their uh, cheer and their yells back and forth. The whole building was moving. Leckler set to move with his leg to kick. Walker waiting on it. Joe takes it at the 7. He had a 73-yarder last week. Walker, finally they track him down at about the 28-yard line. Nice return, though, 20 yards by Little Joe. It's time now for our Aflac trivia question of the week. Our question, which two of the ten government-recognized presidential libraries reside on college campuses? It's about time we got into your brain in some of these, you know, instead of just football questions. I'll give you the answer a little bit later on. You mean they have libraries on these college campuses? I didn't know. That's that. right. I know you never went to yours at <laughs> Purdue. That's a good idea. They have books there and everything. First down. McAvick and Evans behind Bobby Luca. McAvick maybe got out across the 31. Royland Bradley is there. So is Brandon Jennings. McAvicka, not much on the inside sledding so far today. Not, not much the last two games. Nine yards last week, and I was out there on the field kidding him about it yesterday. And Mike, Matt <laughs> Davidson, the receiver, was kind of laughing about it, averaging 1.5 last week, big duel. <laughs> they know their stats, don't That's they? That's right, they do. Oh, look at this shot right here. And you'll get a look at the safeties right here, where they're going to be playing all day, about seven to nine yards off the line of scrimmage and playing option football first. There's the safety hitting Bobby Newcomb. Right on the knee. Late pitch. Brooks made the tackle on Evans. And Newcomb gets up and he's all right. The Evans, or the uh, Newcomb injury rather, is one that's been kind of strange for them because it's not the ACL, it's the PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament. And it doesn't give him a lot of pain, but it swells up tremendously during the week. So they have a hard time gauging whether he's ready to go, not ready to go. Quite frankly, Frank Solich made the call with us yesterday and said he's going to start. I don't know how good he'll be. All right. Third down in the yard. Nebraska trails by a touchdown. Second man is Evans, and he's dumped again. Jay Brooks came flying around from the outside. That win from the inside. That play seemed so slow developing that Jay Brooks was able to take the corner that time. McAvicka that time, the fullback, never hit it full speed. Hey, watch, here comes Brooks coming right around the corner right here. He's going to make the play. When you've got that guy making a play from three yards off the line of scrimmage, that's just not a well-designed play offensively, just too slow. The fourth, third, and out. Yeah, Dett was up front. We had a corner in the back. 
<laughs> and punting time for LaFleur. Nebraska does not have a first down today so far. The punt goes to the 14. Taylor, nice stiff arm, got out near the 30 before he's run out of bounds. 16 yard return. It's Chris Taylor Day at Kyle Field so far. That and the wrecking crew defense has been tough. Next Saturday, Penn State tackles Purdue. Undefeated UCLA meets undefeated Oregon, plus other regional action. Jay Brooks, the pride of Colleen, Texas, and Dat Wynn, the pride of Rockport, Texas. And those two guys just combined on the last stop that forced the punt, and now the Aggies' offense takes over. McCown with a long touchdown pass already today of 81 yards, working from just inside the 29-yard line. Dante Hall on a toss to the left side, and he's tossed down short of the 25 by Brian Shaw. Coming up on Sunday night on ESPN NFL action, Danny Cannell and the Giants take on the Atlanta Falcons, who have only one loss this year. That's at 8-15. Then Monday night football, Dan Marino and the once-beaten Dolphins against the undefeated Jacksonville Jaguars, 8 o'clock Monday night on ABC. Second down and 13 upcoming for Texas A&M. 1245 left first half, 7-0 Aggies. Out of the eye and a play action from the count. He's got plenty of time, but that one was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Might have been Slechta who got a hand on that at the line. That's something Nebraska's done a good job of this year. They get the pass rush in there with the hands up. And they get the push up front. They're so strong up front. And a lot of people use shorter drops because they're afraid of that pass rush. They go to five-step drops. That means those defensive linemen can reach up. Schlechta got it that time. So far, we've seen Lauren Kaiser and Jason Lohr and Jeremy Schlechta, two freshmen, two, two true freshmen making plays for this Nebraska defense. Schlechta slapped that one away. It brings up third and 13. in motion and McCown going to try to roll away from the pressure throws on the run completes it but it's short of the first down I don't know. by about a yard is it Chris really? Cole made the grab yes it is boy that was very very good execution another one of those situations where the defense is doing a good job here it is right here to the outside quarterback's going to come out take it to the outside you say why throw a pass if you're going to go one yard short? Well, that's true, but the ball was led away. It was decent coverage. And you just hope that your receiver will catch it and dive upfield for a first down. So after that touchdown by the Aggies, this is their third straight three and out. And Leckler to kick. Whoops, this one. He almost missed the ball. That goes out near midfield somewhere. In fact, it didn't get to midfield. Boy, for a guy that was sixth in the country coming in, he really shanked that one. Well, we asked you the AFLAC trivia question a little bit earlier which two of the ten government recognized presidential libraries reside on college campus is the answer they're both right here in the state of Texas wow. the Bush School uh, Texas A&M and uh, former president was here at a speaking engagement yesterday they were taping Charlie Rose's show here I guess so 
President Bush was here. Lyndon B. Johnson's libraries at the University of Texas in Austin. So Nebraska starts to drive in A&M territory. And maybe to the 45 goes Makovica. Ron Edwards, the nose man, made the stop. I know all of you are out there wondering where those other presidential libraries are. Well, we're going to see one next week. I think that's probably what Gary's going to do when he comes down on Thursdays. He'll go to the Jimmy Carter Library in Atlanta. President Ford has his in Michigan. President Kennedy's is in Boston. President Eisenhower's in Abilene, Kansas. I'll give you the other couple after this play. On the option, Newcomb, late pitch. Big hit again. There's just no running room for the Ibacks, in this case, D'Angelo Evans. Jay Brooks got a hit. Cornelius Anthony helped spread it out. They're all there to meet him. Franklin Roosevelt's library is in Hyde Park, New York, and Herbert Hoover's is in West Branch, Iowa. Did you know all that? No. That's a simple answer to that one. I didn't even know they had them take around. That I'm home take with this you, my home, friend. give it to my kids, tell them memorize that, mm -hmm. and you can be a TV announcer someday. <laughs> <laughs> Walking off very slowly. Is Kazmersky shaken up on the play. So brings up third down along five. Newcomb, plenty of time in the pocket. Zips it out to Davison. It's a first down. Cornhuskers at the 31-yard line. That's the second grab of the day for Matt Davison. Matt Davidson. First start of the year this year, going to go down 12 yards. Button hook. First play you put in when you're playing street ball, go down to the convertible button hook right in front of it. I'll just throw it right to you. And I can't make the catch. That's it's a really nice convertible. Just hop in, right. and make I'll sure toss you, it to you there. Make sure you catch it. We don't want to dent that thing either. <laughs> first, first down of the day for Nebraska comes at the 11-minute mark. Newcomb. Again, a different eye back, same result. Buckhalter stopped by Jason Glenn. Jason Glenn, whose brother also played here, only was a defensive back, and now with yep. the New York Jets. Jason Glenn comes in the nickel package. You know, there's another tradition around here. It's friendliest campus on around. They say howdy. There's a little howdy right there. Yeah, there was like there's three or howdy. four howdies. There's a howdy. Howdy, Corey. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome to Kyle Field, said Jason Glenn. Howdy. Second down along 10. Newcomb play fake. Fires out complete inside the 20 and down to the 14-yard line is Davison again. 17 more. Matt Davison making his first start and making his presence felt here now in the second quarter. Matt Davison told me at the walkthrough yesterday that he always dreamed of playing for two schools. Well, he kind of said it this way. I'm going to do it exactly the way he said it. He said, you know, I always dreamed of playing here for A&M. I thought that, oh, oh, wait a second. Don't say that. Make sure you, I say <laughs> Nebraska first and then A&M second. He said, I always wanted to be a Cornell school, but I didn't know if they'd recruit me. So he said, I kind of liked A&M. Cannot wait to play here. And a Tecumseh, Nebraska, has given his team a first down at the 14-yard line. Here's the stack eye. And Duca keeps it. Whew. Paid the price. Bobby got leveled by Rocky Bernard as he reached the 10-yard line. That old tradition coming back again. Rocky Bernard, you remember you said these defensive linemen, he's right here. He's going to be come off the block that time, run down the line of scrimmage and goes, howdy, buddy. <laughs> that's nice pursuit. <laughs> you said they were a little undersized, but they do run well. And I think that's what Oklahoma State did last week against this Nebraska team. You can't be slow against this option. you got to have people make plays. Well, this is a team that knows how to put it in the end zone when they get in the red zone. And again, the stack eye. Only about a yard, maybe two inside for Makovica. And on the other hand, you talk about scoring for an offense in the red zone. Texas A&M, they're a team that uh, kind of ruins your plans a lot. Opponents have scored on 11 of 14, though, and seven of them touchdowns. That's a little bit off the norm for this team in past years. They're hoping not to give one up here. Third down and three. Nebraska trying to tie the game up. They can get a first down inside the Aggie four. Newcomb the pitch. Buckhalter got there. Touchdown. Correll Buckhalter dives in the corner. And we're an extra point away from a tie ball game.
You always talk about responsibility defense against the option. This time, Warren Coleman, number 43, did not perform his assignment. He peeked into the inside as an outside linebacker. Bobby Newcomb saw that. Here he is, right here at the end of the line. Watch him peek inside. That's all it is, just one little peek. He looks inside, and then he says, oops, I see you. I'll pitch it outside. There's the breakdown in the defense. A walk-in, well, actually a fly-in, a Ricky Williams fly-in in the end zone. Extra point, number 106 in a row for Chris Brown, and we do have a tie game. So Nebraska got good field position, and they knew what to do with it. Constructed themselves a touchdown. We're dead even at seven. Room 1203 wants to swim without floaties. Marriott, when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Chevy Tahoe with a Vortec engine. The most powerful SUV anywhere. until every thirsty beer-drinking adult has a cold Coors Light in his hands. Rest. Rest is for the peanut vendors and the nacho guys. The folks who frost-brew Coors Light, they don't rest until it's perfectly refreshing. And it's my job to get it to you that way. Oh, there's no rest for the beer man! Not until every fan here is refreshed! Joey, you ready? I think everyone here is pretty refreshed, right? ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Silverado, the truck from Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks. Nicorette gum, you can do it, Nicorette can help. Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide. And Burger King, if you ask us, it just tastes better. And those two young ladies heading into the president's library, we're heading into a kickoff. The tie game, and it just got to the end zone. Perfect bounce into the corner, and the Aggies will start from the 20. One more look at the breakdown right here. You see Bobby Newcomb comes out. You see Holden, number 43, just on the left side of the screen, right there. There's the guy that was out of position, peeking inside at the fullback. The ball's pitched out. That throws the whole defense out of whack. Seven points. 7-7 seven, seven with 8.31 left in the half. And now let's see if the Aggies can answer with some offense of their own. Their big play today, an 81-yard touchdown pass. Other than that, they've had three three-and-outs in a row, and the officials blow this one dead. And uh, all the crowd just had a big sigh because right. Dante Hall had a huge opening there. It might have been due to the whistles. We've been talking and kidding around a little bit about the guys in the hard hats, the construction workers, and that end, our left. And that's going to be the zone, they call it, as this... It's seating go capacity. This high. Yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal. This high. And see these guys that are standing here right now, these guys? They'll have great seats. They're going to have great seats. Yep. And you know, instead of being paid, like right now, these guys are on double time. They're probably making 40 bucks an hour doing what they're doing right there. You they're gotta making more than you and I. You've got to hope those are diet sodas they're right. drinking. Otherwise, I don't want them building the right. zone. Next year, you're going to be paying more than $40 <laughs> an hour to sit there. That's right. right now. <laughs> yeah, they might be in the zone. That could be true. That guy's zoned out right now. <laughs> First down at 15 at the 15. And only about two yards for Hall. Lauren Kaiser closed the door on him. One of the things we talked to Steve Craigthorpe, the offensive coordinator, about when you play Nebraska, you get so concerned about not turning the ball over, you don't take enough chances to make big plays. Three straight times now, AM has not turned the ball over, but three straight three and outs for this offense. To me, that's that's nearly like a turnover, especially when your punter shanks a punt. Yep. And shanked a couple, actually, considering how good he is at that. Second down at 12. Oh, just getting by the first tackler is Hall. 
And the ball came swirling out of there, but he was already to the sideline and out near the 27, where it's going to bring up a third down and long three. Joe Walker made the hit that squirted the ball loose. Walker, he gives up a 67-yard <laughs> touchdown pass last week, and about 10 minutes later, he has a 73-yard punt return that basically won the game for Nebraska. And Frank Solich says he drives me crazy, but at least he drives it in the right direction sometimes. He's a great, great player, and he's going to continue to make plays. He actually went back to where the ball ended up after it was hit, so instead of third and two, it's third and seven. Now Nebraska's in that nickel situation again when they do so many different things. Out of the gun. McCown with a loft one for Cole. He went up for it, but it's broken up by Sweeney. Yeah, they took a shot downfield, and it's incomplete, and they'll have to punt it away again. Nebraska and Sweeney has kind of figured out what the AM passing game is. Every time they get bump and run here, they run a fade. What AM has to do is lock on an out off of the fade, not just run the fade. Right now, the Nebraska defense, and Sweeney says, they're going to adjust to a fade. No matter what route they have, they're going to run this route when I come in bump and run. That's not a high percentage throw. Leckler, this time he got his foot into it. Walker waits on it at the 29. First man missed. Joe Walker got the corner, run out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Nice return of 15 yards. Nebraska and Texas A&M deadlocked at 7. John Graham, veteran stuntman, walks away every time, then drives away. Chevy S10, like a rock. When you have it your way, it just tastes better. You'd expect a fertile patch of earth like Nebraska to produce a university on the cutting edge of agricultural science. But did you know we're also pioneers in the growing field of distance education? Reaching out to students in all 93 Nebraska counties, all 50 United States and 135 countries around the world, no matter what your perspective, there is no place like Nebraska. Promotional consideration provided by National Car Rental, the official car rental company of the Bowl Championship Series on ABC. Let's go! Coming up tomorrow, live at 4 Eastern on ABC Sports, we'll bring you the Major League Soccer Playoffs. You don't want to miss Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Finals. The Columbus Crew takes to the field against the two-time defending MLS Cup champion D.C. United. Who's going to make it to Pasadena? The quest for the Cup will continue tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern. This is when I'd always be worried about the play-action pass and uh, Nebraska going for the home run ball. Buckhalter remains the eye back. Newcomb will keep it. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Warwick Holdman, the first guy to get there to make the stop along with Ron Edwards. Nebraska took a long time. They had to get four minutes into the second quarter to get their initial first down. You see what they did in their first five possessions. But the last drive, once they got that first down, next 48 yep. yards went kind of fast. But they did it mostly through the air still. Yep. 20 rushes for 37 yards in the game. Two passes to Matt Davis and got him down close last time. Second and nine. On their own 46. Newcomb. They go deep down the middle for his tight end, Jackson, and he overshot it. Oh, the flag man. comes in. Was that ball catchable or doesn't it matter? I don't think it was close to catchable. I don't think so either. Cody and Jackson both back there playing center field just trying to shag that fly down. As a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage, also. That ball, you can see the ball was thrown up in desperation.
Cody just kind of entangled himself that time with the tight end Sheldon Jackson who's averaging 27 yards a catch on plays like this coming back there's the ball balls overthrown Cody's just trying to get out of the way well I guess you got to call I that, guess huh? you do I guess you do let's see if they're offsetting anyway holding Nebraska Interference, uh, holding, rather, AM. Right. and m Let us do it again. There's a lot of things that can happen good when you throw the ball deep, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations. If you don't believe so, ask the Green Bay Packers and Randy Moss last week. Four. That's right. Holding on the offense. Holding on the defense. Replay second down. Nebraska, their first penalty. It really doesn't matter if the ball is caught and catchable or not, if the call is holding, and it doesn't matter where the ball is. So second down and nine again. Here's Nebraska coming out in four wide receivers. And as Mike Hankowitz said, they still run the option and the quarterback draw, obviously, off of this formation. Newcomb fires out across midfield, completes it to the 48 to Matt Davison again, has become his favorite receiver today. Short of the first down, though. Third down and a couple upcoming. Last week, Nebraska and Oklahoma State, OSU's defense held Nebraska to four yards rushing in the first half. In fact, the first play of the third quarter, it was zero yards after they sacked Bobby Newcomb. But Joe Walker was the tide turner. This is the one I talked about. 73 yards for the punt return touchdown, and then Mike Rucker makes the hit on Nathan Simmons, short of the goal line, short of an upset, and Frank Solich team remains unbeaten at 5-0, but they've got their hands full today, tied at seven, here in Aggieland at Kyle Field. Third and a couple. Newcomb hit and dropped at the 50. Lonnie Madison made the stop. Well, a ms defense has always been known for those front guys uh, playing a lot of people, especially this year. As many as eight different defensive linemen will play. This time it's Lonnie Madison, number 97, who makes a stunt inside. This time Ben Gesford, the guard, who was reaching on the play to the outside. Madison comes inside and makes the play. That's a huge stop again. Running game for Nebraska has been nothing in this game so far. The floor's kick, he hit it a mile in the air. What a beauty. Taylor gets out of the way, and it makes the end zone. With five minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And we're tied up at seven as the Aggies will take over on offense. Let's take a look at the Home Depot coaches fact. Nebraska coaching staff, you talk about experience. You think about the Penn States and Nebraska's, those kind of teams, when they're consistent with their staffs, they tend to be consistent in their victories. And you can see Frank Solich has been around 20. Coach Darlington, 26. Charlie McBride, defensive coordinator, 22. Coach Tenepur on the line, 25. And the list keeps going on and on. And that's how you win a lot of football games. You keep the same people around. They are all good coaches. Didn't go anywhere. The only one that went anywhere was Coach Osborne, and he retired. <laughs> no, I was, I was looking at all those years, you know, and I'm just kind of playing with that. If you add that up, that adds up to 135 years. And, you know, if you what was happening 135 years ago at this time? Um, Andrew Johnson was being impeached. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, boy. What is and you're kidding me about the presidential library <laughs> stuff? <laughs> all right. I, did, I stayed up studying for that one. You must time. have. Second down and five. The give to Hall. Got three more. Vanden Bosch makes back-to-back -back tackles on Dante. And it will bring up a critical third and two for AM if they're to try to get anything else going offensively in the second quarter. That Vanden Bosch kid is going to be some kind of player. He sure is. And, uh, Charlie McBride pointed him out to us and said he's going to be another Grant Wisterman. And... You're right. You watch him. He plays with a fast motor, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Third down and two. Let's see if AM can rev something up here offensively. First man. All for Toombs. Can the fullback take it? Toombs. Almost got there. 71 yards. And he weighs about 271. 
man. And he runs. Not like a 271-pound guy, I'll tell you that. Nebraska was caught gambling. You think these coaches don't stay late at night for some reason? This time they had a feeling that this type of play would look. Look at that hole. Nebraska had their linebackers up close to the line of scrimmage trying to draw the blocks. And when Toons got the ball, he didn't look like anything but a tailback with the ball as he was just galloping towards the end zone. They call him Big Rumble. He's rumbled to the one. Now it's Hall. Fullback takes it 71 yards. Your tailback takes it the other three feet. AM back in front. Who would have known you'd need a bottle of mouthwash to play Nebraska today, huh? <laughs> Two touchdowns. The extra point is up and good. 14 to 7. The Aggies in front. 37 left in the half here. Let's send it to our New York studios in John Sutter. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 98, a very big day of college football. Virginia, the only team in the top 10 not playing today. Yeah, 14 teams start today undefeated. That number will get knocked down a few key matchups all day long. All right, we'll have the scores and highlights. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 98. On the sideline, big rumble. <laughs> Jamar Toombs, he brings back memories of George Woodard. Remember George him? George Woodard, yep. He had over 2,700 yards in his career here, and then he kind of ate himself out of a football career. R.C. Slocum's told this young guy, don't get too big, big fella. He thought he was about 235, which is what they list him in the media guide. The first time they went to training table, he says, you don't want to get up to 270. What R.C. found out later, he was already at 271. Right. If he's 235, I want to jump on that scale tomorrow <laughs> because I'm going to be under 200 again. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's a shocker. Caught Charlie McBride gambling in one of those stunt defenses. He put his linebackers very close to the line of scrimmage. Gashed it with the fullback. Did not think the fullback would get the ball. And that's what happens when you gamble and play man coverage to the outside. Short kick taken at the 28. And it's Sheldon Jackson, second time today. The tight end has had to field a kick. And for the second time today, Nebraska will have to play from behind. 80-yard march, 71 of it by Jamar Toombs in a minute and 36. You see that welt sort of on his forehead? It's the only problem he's having right now injury-wise. For some reason, after games, that thing swells up on it. Sometimes he can't get his helmet on. And you were kidding around yesterday, and uh, Steve Cragthorpe said, well, you know, it's not that big a problem. I said it, it might be to him if he's not going out afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you wear your helmet on a date, That's it could it. look a little odd. Got to go with the baseball cap. There's those safeties again, about six and a half, seven and a half yards all day. Bobby Newcomb comes out, plants, and throws deep on the sideline. Incomplete. Intended for Wiggins. And will bring up second down and 10 with 324 left in the half. Bobby Newcomb is so used to throwing big plays all day. Coming out to the outside again in a man-to-man -man coverage right here. But the tight end, Sheldon Jackson, is open. Watch him come across the middle of the field. I think you'll see Frank Solich gets some word from Turner Gill upstairs that our tight end on that play is wide open and come back to that later. Well, Jackson had two big catches last week that helped the cause. Two catches for 70 yards in that Oklahoma State game. And they're going to have to get him the ball sometime. Bobby Newcomb, four of seven in the first half. Comes up throwing again. Completes it again to Davison. And he's tracked down at the 45, a gain of about six. And it's going to be a third down situation again. Third down and four for Nebraska. That win is just now trotting on the field. Chad Franson, who the old 12th man who was issued number 59 before, was wearing 12 today, was on the field in that situation. That's back out there. The reason he was wearing the 12th, number 12 jersey again is the last two weeks, their 12 men have been hurt. Right. So <laughs> Chad Franson put on the old jersey. That win's back in his old spot, though. Third down and four. 
first man. Short of the first down again. It wasn't the first man. It was a nice fake, but Holdman puts the stop on Newcomb, and it's time to punt again unless Frank Solich wants to gamble a little bit with 2.25 to go here. I doubt if he will. Another good call by Mike Hankwitz that time. He came off the corner, off the slot, excuse me, with the safety blitz that time. Bobby Newcomb saw it, and that's why he turned it up so quickly. They wanted to run the option, but Hankowitz guessed right. I don't, I don't know if he's guessing, though, Brad, really. <laughs> 15, what, 14 straight years this he's facing the Nebraska. 15th, yeah. This is the 15th. Well, you don't very often see Nebraska punt six times in a half. That's what they're set to do again. LaFleur, another high beauty. Taylor, again, lets it go, and it makes the end zone. Just a little bit too much on those kicks, 52-yarder. And the Aggies come back out on the field from the 20 yard line and they still got some time to work now 150. You would think R.C. Slocum would want to play this safe now if they can take a touchdown lead to the locker room they'd be happy with that although remember the kickoff classic they had the lead against Florida State at halftime and it didn't hold up. That is true two big turnovers in that game turned the tide very quickly but I don't think this A&M team fears Nebraska the way they did FSU coming from behind with that passing game. I think you'll see it very close to the vest. I agree with you. Give is Hall and Dante's drop for a loss by Mike Rucker. Loss of about two. I think you'll see Nebraska call a time up. There you go. Florida State, a 23-14 loss in that one. They lost on a come from behind effort last year in the bowl game to UCLA. And Nebraska in the Big 12 championship. But a different story so far today with 142 left. It's the Aggies in front of the Corn Oscars. It would have been easy to have been a football player and not a student. And conversely, it would have been much easier to have been just a student and left football for some other day and time. But it wouldn't have been as joyous, as rich, as humbling to have been one without the other. So for all of us, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart, not for a single award on a single night, but for the many memorable and molding moments that we have had the privilege to call ourselves student athletes. ABC Tuesday. Brad's fear of going to college has him looking for an easy way out. Don't you ever worry about messing up? Have you ever seen Tool Time? <laughs> then, America knows a hit comedy when they see it. You must be Michael and Sydney's dad. Well, how do you know that? Well, Oh, oh. The Hughley's right after Home Improvement, ABC Tuesday. Looking for some action this Saturday night? All new funny video action. That is... Go with it, baby. AFB, ABC Tonight. Kyle Field, about 12,000 less fans than normal. 58,000's capacity now with the construction going on. And out to the 25 goes Dante Hall. Jay Foreman made the tackle. You know, the bad news is you got to get your hair cut here. The good news is you get to kiss the girl next to you every time the team <laughs> scores. Well, the I way mean, styles are going nowadays, these haircuts are right in style. That's true. You know, before, they used to stand out. Now, I think everybody's got one of those things, don't they? And the wave of maroon. They had 20,000 at yell practice last night here, as they always do the night before a game. And set to take over at halftime, which is 132 away. And that's when John and Todd will be along to update yeah. you on all the scores and highlights from the other games. Some huge games going on today. There's the Nebraska yep, section. In red. Now, I don't know when's the last time I've seen a maroon clash with a red like this since I picked out my sport coat and tie <laughs> last time. Now, Christy usually does it for me. There's the nice see. red. It yep. just does not go with maroon, does nope, it? No, nope. it just doesn't go. That one row over there, those those people just can't <laughs> get along. They're clashing. They really are clashing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough place to play football, though, as we told you about R.C. Slocum's home winning record in the last 10 years. And it is one of those places, and especially when they get that new facility and the new end zone yep. done. It's going to be loud in here, and it's going to be crazy. It's going to be even crazier later on if they somehow can hold on for two more quarters against Nebraska. Pretty good company up there, huh? Yep. Seems to me that this is the perfect opponent. The reason why AM went into the Big 12 was a game just like this for Nebraska to come to their home field. They're down 6-1 to one in the series against Nebraska, but keep in mind this is the Cornhuskers' first trip into Kyle Field. Those other games were either at Nebraska or neutral oh sites. Oh, my. He had to get to the line for a first down. Obviously, he's just short, and i got to believe Nebraska's going to take another timeout. 
Make him give it up. You don't have to measure. There's no need to measure. If you touch the line, it's a first down. And the foot of the official is not touching the line. Right. You don't have to bring the chains out on this. <laughs> Look at that. You got to bring the chains out. These guys don't know. Oh, they just changed their if, mind. If the nose is touching the ball, it's a first down. Of, of the, the nose of the ball is touching the line. It's just like the end line of the end zone. I tell you what, we were going by the linesman, and he wasn't even close no, to there the 30-yard line. You see the nose of the ball right there. That's when, if you're Jimmy Durante, you, you got, got a, yourself got a first advantage. down. That's yep. right. You see, go. That's all you got is got to have a big nose. That's right there. I'm not, I didn't mean that, Randy. You weren't looking at me, were you? No, nope, okay. Randy neither. All right. Still time. Either going to throw the ball deep or run the ball. And it's Hall. I'd say got about four. Lauren Kaiser's been a busy defensive lineman. but he's got a lot of stops today. And we are under a minute. You know, if this is, uh, if you're Florida State or Florida or, you know, Purdue, UCLA, you're taking timeouts. Right now, you're Texas A&M. You're still not to the stage throwing the ball with a second start quarterback to really take chances like this. I think going in 14-7 at halftime, you got the advantage, you got to feel good about it. I just got that itch right here. Just really? looking at you that they should throw. Throw the ball, throw it. If you do, let's throw it real deep. Second and six. And they won't, it's Toombs. And he gets popped as he crossed the 35 out to the 36 yard line. Kelsey so many, made the stop. So many times in this situation, you see a quarterback you know, he's watched so many games on television try to make a play that he shouldn't make and make a mistake. I think this is good coaching. Get it into halftime. Take the momentum. Make your fans happy. Sell a lot of hot dogs and concessions, right? Last week, tied with Oklahoma State at the break. This week, trailing 18th-ranked Texas A&M at the break. And the Valvoline halftime. 98 with John Saunders and Todd Blackledge coming up. It is 14-7. The Aggies trying to pull an upset here at Kyle Field. Home Depot is very serious about paint. We want to be your paint store. We are a real paint store. You go to paint, you can get everything. You can get the rollers, you can get your paint. You're going to need drop cloths, we've got that. You're going to need ladders, we've got ladders. Because you can get more than just quality paint. You can get your paint, you can get all your supplies. We can mix paint, we can color match paint. We've got everything you need to, to get a paint job done. We can custom fit anything. I mean, you could bring in your shirt and we could match your shirt. We have the products and the product knowledge that the paint stores have, if not more of it. Afraid your next get-together will be a flop? Order Chili's Party Platters. Act now. Call a Chili's representative, and your guests will flip over party-sized servings of buffalo wings, fajitas, baby back ribs, and more. And pre-party stress now. Order Chili's Party Platters new from Chili's. Hi, I'm Tired of financial companies that make you feel small and unimportant? No, I'm sorry. I can't help you. Then sit down with a MetLife financial professional to discuss your financial future. Get Met. It pays. Why are business travelers choosing sleep in? The well-lit grounds, the electronic locks, the walk-in showers, complimentary breakfast, because it's a place that understands the needs of the business traveler. It's all those things, plus the service. Hey, knock it off. Is incredible. If you're traveling on business, stay at sleep in, in a class by itself. Something powerful is happening. Introducing the new Silverado with a more powerful V8 than any other pickup. It's the truck from Chevrolet. Like a rock. Oh, like a rock. Valvoline, halftime 98. Brought to you by Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. From our New York studios, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. Nebraska did struggle last week against Oklahoma State, but I'm surprised you were not. You expected this. Well, Texas A&M, we saw them in the opening week. They can play defense. The only question for them, can they score enough points to beat a team like Nebraska? So far, they're doing their job. All right, 14-7 at halftime. Second half still to come. Right now, let's rip down the scores and the highlights. Tennessee against Georgia. A lot of this action in the top ten. Eight of the top ten teams in action today. Six to three. Champ Bailey with another interception. His second interception of the season. Both teams playing very good defense in this. Both teams a lot of speed on the defensive side of the ball. T. Martin and Quincy Carter. Carter, of course, 
the freshman doing so well in this game. This one is tied at seven apiece between Florida State and Miami. Another one of those games that used to be a huge rivalry. Well, Miami still remembering Florida State beat them 47 to nothing last year. Those Miami players were playing with a lot of enthusiasm today. Peter Warwick with a touchdown reception in that game. Ohio State, the number one team in the nation. The top five all on the road today, but you knew the Buckeyes, it would not be tough. Joe Germain to John Lumpkin, one yard on a touchdown pass there. Joe Germain had a pretty good day. When you try to gang up and stop the run, Joe Germain can really kill you. He's a very accurate passer. Here he goes, 30 yards to David Boston. Solid game for Joe Germain. 307 yards and three touchdown throws. And for Michael Wiley, they only need 68 yards in the ground to get the 41 to nothing victory. Penn State against Minnesota. Penn State, of course, losing to Ohio State a week ago. And the entire Minnesota team down for the pregame prayer. And Andy Persby would need it because he gets sacked by Mac Morrison. Freshman in there, so tough for Minnesota. And against a good Penn State defense. This is the best Penn State defense I've seen since they've been in the Big Ten. They have not allowed a point in the first quarter yet, shutting out Minnesota as we speak. Number 19, Arkansas. They have surprised a lot of people up to 4 and 0 right now. Madre Hill with a touchdown run, 13 to 3 is the score. Memphis has just been a struggling team looking for their first win. Missouri, number 21 against Iowa State. Corby Jones, some were questioning whether or not he could play in this game. Two touchdowns passes and a touchdown run. Well, he's their leader, and I'll tell you, they just feed off of having him in the ballgame. He's sucking it up for the team today, leading them right now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Iowa State, unfortunately, has to go against the top rushers three yeah. weeks in a row. You know they're going to struggle on that one. First, both Ricky Williams and then Devin West. Yeah, Iowa State has a pretty good rusher of their own, Darren Davis, but their defense really tested the last three weeks in a row. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame at Arizona State. A couple of teams enigmas thus far this year. You don't know which way they're going to go. Jarius Jackson has a bum shoulder, doesn't stop him here as he hooks up with Malcolm Johnson. Seven yards, and the Irish score first. Ryan Keeley then in some trouble. Well, we're seeing this in a lot of the games today. Miscues leading to points. Here, Keeley, an ill-advised throw intercepted by Sanders, returns it 26 yards for the touchdown. Notre Dame up in front, both of their touchdowns, the result of turnover. The Irish looking to go 4-1. Their only loss was to Michigan State. They got clobbered in that one. Georgia Tech and NC State in the ACC. Jesse Wade bobbles the snap. And the kick gets blocked by Travis Tillman, recovered by Jason Bostick, and Georgia Tech comes up with a touchdown, special team so much. But you've got to stop Torrey Holt, and it's tough to do that. Torrey Holt is proving to be the best receiver in the country. Here he goes, a little throw action. Throwing, you got to respect him on the end around 45 yards to Chris Coleman to get North Carolina State right back in it. But you see Georgia Tech with the 16-point lead. We'll keep you up to date on that one. Now in Major League Baseball today, the Atlanta Braves looking to get their first victory in the NLCS. The Padres are leading it 2-0. This one is scoreless. We'll keep you up on that one as well. Navy against Air Force. Kale Bonds, two touchdown runs and a touchdown pass. Navy is getting clobbered in this one. And Air Force is now 28 for 28 in the red zone, including 23 touchdowns. Mississippi and Alabama take a 10-7 lead for the Tide. Utah State at Washington. Washington has a couple of losses already, but they got a big lead here. 36 to nothing is the score. Willie Hurst with two touchdown runs. And North Carolina gets Pittsburgh. 29 to 10 is the final. Oscar Davenport, a 44-yard touchdown pass in the game. A big matchup tonight. Kansas State against Colorado. Interesting teams. People say K-State right. has not been tested. Colorado, on the other hand, has had to come back just about every game. Well, and John, everybody has questions. You know, is Kansas State for real? Are there offense and defense as good as their statistics would suggest. We'll find a little more out tonight, but one thing that's for sure, their special teams are outstanding. You take a look, they have the best combination of kickers in the country. Martin Gramatica, their place kicker, he was the Groza Award winner last year. This is a 65-yarder he kicked earlier. And then when they have to punt the ball, which they've only had to do it eight times so far this year, James Garcia is averaging 56 yards per punt. They win the battle of field position every game they play because of their kicking game. You throw in there David Allen, who's the nation's leading punt returner, already has returned three for touchdowns. Kansas State has not been in a close ball game yet. But when they get in a close game, and I think this game against Colorado tonight will be a close one, go into the fourth quarter, the special teams will be the difference for Kansas State tonight and the rest of the season. A big one coming up later tonight. We'll continue with more of Valvoline Halftime 98 right after this. Yes, Texas A&M has the lead on Nebraska at halftime. McCown to Chris Taylor, 81 yards on the touchdown. Get out on the highway, the 
Looking for adventure in whatever comes our way. Oh, yeah. Here and God are gonna make it. Before I quit smoking, I asked my doctor, is Nicorette gum safe? And he said, to quit smoking? Of course Nicorette gum is safe. Smoking is not. People smoke to get nicotine, and they get carbon monoxide and tars, which are deadly. Smoking is the danger. Nicorette can be a big part of the solution. Nicorette lets you use nicotine when you need it to help you overcome your cravings. Don't hesitate for a second. Nicorette gum helps you fight your cravings, your habit, your way. You can do it. Nicorette can help. Texas A&M University, where leaders are developed, bright minds are challenged, and a rich tradition defines us. Where scholars conduct important research to enrich the lives of people everywhere. We have one of the largest student bodies in the country, yet we are committed to giving our students personal attention. We are Texas A&M University, daring to be the best, keeping an eye on the future. This is Valvoline Halftime 98, Oklahoma and Texas in the house that Doak built today. And you can see Ricky Williams wearing number 37, the number of his friend Doak Walker, who passed away a couple of weeks ago. And Todd, you had a chance to meet Ricky Williams earlier this year. Obviously a class act, but consider this. He already has four NCAA records. By the end of this year, that number could be as high as 11 and likely will be 10. You know, and John, it's sometimes the numbers are harder to digest. But consider this. This season, coming into today, he had run for more yards than 108 of 112 Division I teams and scored more points than 63 of them. That just by himself. Yeah, absolutely amazing. He needs about 130 yards a game to become the number one rusher in the history of the game. Ricky Williams here, 20 yards in the first half. He really took off early in this game. Shows the speed there and then shows the power. He only needs a crease because he's got the great acceleration. He's got the power to break arm tackles. Here he goes 10 yards into the end zone. His second touchdown of the day. As you take a look at his numbers, 139 yards and the two touchdowns. 34 to 3 is the final. The biggest win in the Red River battle since 1970. And here's the list. Keep this in mind. Everyone on this list, except for Ricky Williams, that may change, has won a Heisman Trophy. Well, saw all of those guys play and carry the football. Rare company indeed. Ricky Williams is keeping. In the Big East, West Virginia against Temple, Amos Zeroway could not play a couple of ailments in this one, so he's on the sidelines and sweats. But the guy who stepped in for him really did the job. Alvin Swoop did a great job coming off the bench. 141 yards and two touchdowns. Also a nice day by quarterback Mark Bolger. 257 yards and three scoring tosses. And six straight games with two or more touchdown passes for Bolger. Maryland against Clemson in the Terps. Struggle in Death Valley. Brandon Streeter here. 28 yards to Brian Wofford for the touchdown. And the Terps get shut out 23-0. Well, Clemson has now beaten Maryland six games in a row. And in those six games, Maryland has scored only a total of 12 points. Wild one in the Big Ten. Indiana against Michigan State. Cedric Irvin, this is in the second overtime, takes the handoff, cuts to the right, then back up field, 25 yards for the touchdown. Michigan State on top, then a chance to do it on defense for Nick Saban. Fourth and 12, last ditch effort. Jay Rogers trying to hit Tyrone Browning. The big hit by Marshall. Game over, overtime win for Michigan State. 38 to 31 is the final, and Cedric Irvin with 130 yards and two touchdowns, including that game winner. Northwestern against Iowa. This one is a tough one to call. Randy Reiner scrambles. Then hooks up with Kevin Casper out of a couple of tackles there. Tosses the football. 50 yards on the touchdown as Iowa would pull off the victory over Northwestern 26-24. Well, Northwestern had won the three previous games in a series. A good win for Iowa at home in this one. If you are Auburn, you're in some trouble because if you lose this game today to Mississippi State, you're looking at being 1-4 for the first time since the 1950s. And Auburn did struggle again. There's War Eagle, but this is the opening kickoff. Markeith Cooper fumbles it, and then they let him have a touchdown on this one. Looked like it should have been down. Yeah, it looked like the man's knee was down when he picked up the ball. Looked like his knee was down again when he lateraled it. Two times they could have blown this play dead. Instead, it's a great start in this ballgame for Mississippi State as they go on to win 38-21. to Eugene Clinton with the touchdown on that play. But here's the Auburn miscues. You turn it over like this, and you will struggle. Yeah, when you're struggling, it just seems like you go from bad to worse. And 
Mississippi State made Auburn pay with those miscues. You see, some teams don't always do that. Mississippi State, when they got the turnovers, they scored points. Marshall is now 6-0, and and they've won 95 games in the 90s. That's the most wins for Division 1A or 1AA. Chad Pennington with another terrific day. Don't forget, next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Purdue against Penn State. Purdue, their quarterback is Drew Brees. He is a sight to see. 522 yards passing last week. In the Pac-10, a couple of the great offenses. Oregon goes up against UCLA. In the ACC, Virginia against Georgia Tech. Great offense against a great defense. And in the Big 12, you're going to see one of these games, either Oklahoma State or Kansas State or Texas Tech against Colorado. Whoever wins the K-State-Colorado game tonight, that is the team you will see next week. We'll continue with more Valvoline Halftime 98 right after this. Some people have shrinks. Some people have their garage. Hi, I'm expecting a fax. Room 212 wants the ammunition to deal with her toughest clients. Nothing. Hi, Hi. Davies 212. I called earlier. Right, fax. That hasn't come yet. I need it for a meeting. Excuse me, Miss Davies? Oh, just came in. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Business services by Marriott. When you're comfortable, you could do anything. Still going. I've had marriages that didn't last this long. Valvoline, halftime 98. Brought to you by Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. This year, Big 12 athletes are lining up. Not only on the field of play, but to support another group of athletes, Special Olympians. Each year, athletes, coaches, and administrators from across the conference participate in a variety of Special Olympic activities, from tennis to swimming to track and field. The Big 12 Conference and Special Olympics have formed a winning partnership. Some sports are better for the heart. Special Olympics and the Big 12 Conference, a partnership for life. Want to get away to a place that's spellbinding? You Escape to a world that's exceptionally clever. When you look into Jeanette's eyes, you'll know what she's thinking. Have a night that's a fantasy come true. You'll pay later. The all-new Fantasy Island, followed by Cupid ABC tonight. Sunday, in the macho world of race car driving, he wanted to be a sheep. I like being a girl. Barbara Walters, Diane Sawyer, 2020 Sunday. Feel the thrill of giving away a million dollars and blowing up a famous landmark. One minute. You'll be there for an all-new Behind Closed Doors with Joe London, ABC Tuesday. The Bowl Championship Series is online with live action, interviews, game highlights, and live polls at ESPN.com and on America Online. Welcome back to your second half is straight ahead, but first it's time to introduce this week's winner of the Burger King Scholar Athlete of the Week Award. Each week during the 98 season, Burger King Corporation and its National Franchise Association will donate $1 million to the general scholarship funds of recipient colleges and universities. This week's Scholar Athlete is Jake Stuvey, tight end at the University of Missouri. Jake, who recently completed his undergraduate biology degree with a 3.83 GPA, stresses the importance of hitting the books. I just think education is the most important asset that uh, anybody can have in this day and age with information and things changing hands at literally the speed of light. The knowledge that you gain in the classroom is it's what's going to last you a lifetime. Jake Stuvey, the Burger King Scholar Athlete. ABC's coverage of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. I know a place. This is not a country for wimps. We invented the cowboy, the jawbreaker, and the quarterback blitz. I'll take you there. We are rough on our cars. So get a Chevy Malibu. It'll go up to 100,000 miles before its first scheduled tune-up. Transmission fluid, 100,000 miles. Engine coolant, five years or 150,000 miles. We're talking tough. The car you knew America could build. The Chevy Malibu. I'll take you there.
another Nokia discovery. Small words are hard to read, which is why at Nokia, we make wireless phones with screens that are big, so they're easier to read. Inspired technology with a human touch. Nokia, connecting people. ABC Tuesday, Mike takes his shot in the woods. My son may look like a deer to you. <laughs> but ends up saving Private Bambi. But that doesn't mean he shouldn't get the same quality care as a normal looking kid. Then, America's going wild over Sports Night. This is a coup, Isaac. We need it promoted. No problem. Sports Night after Spin City, ABC Tuesday. This is Imagine TV. The Big Mountaineer Drive-Away is on its way again, where you can fill up with $500 worth of gas from Diamond Shamrock or Total when you buy or lease a new Mercury Mountaineer. Enough gas to go coast to coast three times. Plus, besides filling up with $500 worth of gas, fill up with big savings. We'll cover your first month's payment up to $500. But hurry, the Big Mountaineer Drive-Away ends soon, so drive in now. Till next time, imagine yourself in a Mercury. From Dalhart to Brownsville, El Paso to Texarkana, David Dewhurst is talking to Texans. What does the land office do? The land office earns hundreds of millions of dollars every year for public education. I'll make improving public education my top priority. As a proven conservative businessman, I'll work hard as your next land commissioner to earn more money from our state lands for public education. For Texas, the choice is clear. David Dewhurst, a George Bush Republican for land commissioner. When the times get tough and the road gets rough She's all I need She's all I need to get me through the day and Night after night you know just why I say She's all I need Chevy, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road Chevy truck, she's all I need Slime, slime, and slime. Marvin on a mission Monday at 6. It's the kind of game that you need to bring some chapstick along. It's been a kisser for Texas A&M. A couple of touchdowns, a couple of big plays. They lead the number two team in the country 14 to 7 as we're set to start the third quarter from Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. And the Cornhuskers trailing by a score also will have to kick off. Dante Hall is the deep man first for time, the Aggies. First time Nebraska has trailed since, uh, what, Missouri last year? It's been last a long time. time. They were tied last week at halftime with Oklahoma State. And this one by Brown deep in the end zone. Hall will just let it go. Oh, First time they trail. There it is. September of last year against Missouri. Of course, they went on to win that game in overtime. Might take that kind of performance today the way they're sputtering. You know, this game has been pretty even. Uh, Nebraska, unbelievably, 30 plays for just 90 yards. Makovica. D'Angelo Evans, 14 yards apiece, and in Bobby Newcomb, only three yards rushing. But you know, except for the two big plays for 152 yards by Toombs and uh, Taylor, AM has had 29 plays for just 87 yards. So very even, except for the two big plays. First down from the 20. It has been a good old fashioned pad popper, that's for sure. And now the Audible call by McCown, and he wants to throw that sideline pass again and in and out of the hands of Chris Cole this time. They've tried that fade several times, Gary, and you said yep. when they get single coverage out there, they do it. What they have done, though, is you said a couple of big plays have been the difference in the ballgame. Two big plays. Uh, Jared Toombs uh, gets the huge uh, play for, you know, to set up a touchdown, and then Chris Taylor, the long touchdown. Two plays for that much. I think Nebraska needs to find their running game somehow, and I will not be surprised if Bobby Newcomb Kind of gets a little bit of a look-see early, and they don't make a change at quarterback. He does not seem to me to be full speed. You saw in the Morgan Stanley Dean Winter first half statistics, an anemic ground game for Nebraska of 38 yards, which is what Gary's talking about as AM now goes to the ground for a couple in Dante Hall. But you talk about Nebraska, we talked about 73 yards is all they mustered on offense on the ground last week, and then they turn around 
and have 38 at half down there on that same kind of pace and that's just so un Nebraska like defensively the leaders Jay Foreman five tackles leads the way Kelsey and Finley the three each Mike Rucker had one tackle for loss late in that second quarter they're going to need a lot more tackles for loss to get back in the game now third down and eight that's Hodge in motion here comes some pressure look like a face mask on Johnson and let's see he was called it, it was. for a personal foul on a late hit last week that negated what would have been an interception and almost a touchdown by Jason Wiltz as he was roughing the quarterback last week let's take a look at his left hand here Randy McCown ducks the play right there and you can see Eric Johnson trying to grab whatever he can to get the sack but the first thing he gets is the face mask and that's going to be a, you know a, a moving of the chains right there an automatic first down McCown only two completions but one was an 81 yard touchdown 68 yards for Dante Hall the workhorse Jamar Toombs though the 71 yarder part of his 89 in the first half from the previous spot a huge play because AM would have been forced to punt the ball right there. Great defense, great rush from the outside. Just a mistaken aggressiveness that Frank Solich is looking at right there. First down out at the 37. RC's in the shade now. So is the whole AM bench. And out to the 39. Two more for Hall. Dante's going to have to work for that yardage today to get up around 100. And you can see the shadows cast from press box on down onto Kyle Field. Now, the other side, we had a hot it's a little day, warm over there. That would be a tough, tough thing, and it would be a big advantage. But I think the weather is just perfect, whether you're in the sun or not. I yeah, don't think it's, it's beautiful it's, today. It is. It's just football weather down here. Second down at eight. Randy McCown has a look at that sweatband. Carries the plays called from the booth and comes up to a second down and eight. Sir Parker in motion out of the Aggie backfield. He's an extra receiver. That one's knocked down. Tony Ortiz, who's back and healthy now and playing linebacker, swatted that one away as they were going to try to swing it out to Sir Parker. I'll tell you what they have to do. Tony Ortiz right here, number 37. He just reads the eyes of McCown right here. Just sticks his hand out. Cowan is not the tallest quarterback, but you think, you know, usually when you're a quarterback at that height, you get used to finding seams to throw into. And right now, Cowan just two for eight on the day, but he's made good on one of those throws, that's for sure. Here's a, another one coming up, maybe. Third down and eight. Parker stays in there. And he and Toombs flank McCown in the shotgun. McCown's going to scramble for some time, looking for a block. Didn't get all that he needed, though. Got out to about the 43-yard line, and it's going to be a putting situation for the Aggies. So no harm, no foul, I guess, on Eric Johnson's except, personal foul. Except for field position, but again, Randy McCown does a good job of not tossing the ball to the other side. Mm -hmm. If it's not there, let's punt. Now, that works okay when you're ahead 14-7, to seven, but the momentum of the game right now is pretty just... Uh, much holding, waiting for somebody to make the next big play. Leckler hasn't had a good punt all day. He's an excellent punter. That long 55 is deceiving. This one is a good punt. Walker hit at the six. Now, if they call that for too quick into that uh, two-yard zone, I'm going to be surprised. At some point, you just got to be able to go full blast. Either that or, you know, what's happened with that new rule is none of the returners are calling fair catches anymore in right. those situations because they just feel, I think it's Toya Jones, number five that time, was the guy who came down and made a great play on it. Let's see if there's two yards. The two-yard halo catches it. He's at the, well, yeah, that's two yards. That's two yards. That's what you're exactly at. He's on the six. Jones was on the eight. Eight minus six, two. That's there. That's nice not a man. Penalty. Eight. Just a five-yard penalty. It's not that big a deal, really. You see that thrown literally on every punt return. Almost. Though. tough time today maybe got a yard out of that he's been struggling with the uh, bruised toe and now he has 
a bruised tailbone last week, and you see the reaction by the coaches. They're kind of like in a bird nest right there, aren't they? They got a nice little, little view of the game. Seven of eight possessions have gone first downless for Nebraska. Newcomb comes up firing. Dangerous pass, but caught. That is beautiful defense that time. Billy Hafke made the catch. Jason Webster was right there with him. That was a long throw cross field to only pick up eight yards. What happens is Bobby Newcomb sees that play by Jason Webster and knows next time he's going to have to make sure he gets that ball on time. Third down, a long one. for Nebraska trying to start this third quarter drive to get back in the football game. They trail by a touchdown. They've been stopped on a lot of these third and shorts. Newcomb, who he had to stretch out to get this one. I think he got it, though, by about the length of the ball. And that'll quiet the crowd temporarily with 10.59 remaining third quarter. with its first first down of this third quarter they trail 18th ranked Texas A&M 14 to 7 here at Kyle Field as Nebraska was held to 38 first half rushing yards and they're still sputtering a little bit on offense now Newcomb off play action wanted to go deep scrambles and he's going to go down the wrecking crew gets to him Cornelius Anthony the first man there Good coverage in the secondary and an even better delayed rush by the Aggies. So Nebraska still having trouble offensively. We welcome you Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson at Kyle Field a sold out crowd in College Station and loving what they're seeing from their Aggies. It really has. It's been a game of big plays and they've all been for Texas A&M so far. Nebraska needs to find some other people besides Matt Davidson to throw the ball. Sheldon Kennedy, their tight end, has been wide open all game. They have not been able to get the ball to him. The two big plays today for AM. A 71-yard run by their fullback that got him close. And an 81-yard touchdown pass. And now the defense going to work. Warwick Holdman. And they get to Newcomb on back-to-back -back plays. Bobby Newcomb has been struggling with that leg. He does not have that explosive speed. He's been throwing okay throughout the game, but when people are not open right away, this is not a sophisticated pass offense for Nebraska. He's got one guy to throw to. He's not there. It's a sack. The wrecking crew is making a wreck of this Nebraska offense. Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator, has done a marvelous job with his troops, and now it's third down and 19. Newcomb from the gun. And under the gun, and dropped again, and the ball is loose. Texas A&M, touchdown. <laughs> Holman with a hit. Edwards with a touchdown. You never figure you're going to kiss when your defense is out there. You're not even ready for that. And all of a sudden, a sack says, put the chapstick on, as you said, and let's go. My, oh, my. Extra point makes it 21 to 7. The fans are loving it. The coaches are loving it. The whole stadium is shaking. When you have it your way, it just tastes better. When you're renting a car, you don't always want to drop it off where you pick it up. And with National Car Rental's one-way rate program, you don't have to. You could pick up your car in Jacksonville and drop it off in Nashville. 
or pick it up in Los Angeles. Drop it off in Las Vegas. In fact, with national special one-way rates, you can pick up your car almost anywhere and drop it off almost anywhere else <laughs> with no separate drop-off fee. So what are you waiting for? Someday, Noah was first. Now it's Norman Waters' turn. You don't want me to build a mall? Tony Danza in a premiere movie event. Noah, ABC Sunday at 7, 6 Central. Again, those of you watching Notre Dame against Arizona State, there is still a power outage. They're going to continue to play this game and keep the time with the stopwatch. We'll get out there as soon as we can. But right now, let's take it back out to Brad Nessler. John, no lack of power in College Station. The power <laughs> belongs to Holdman, who just scored the defensive touchdown. And this place is rocking. It's 21 to 7. The Aggies lead the number two team in the country. You put Nebraska in those predictable situations in the past, and they make the same mistakes as everybody else. Here's a kick. Down to the nine to Wiggins. Wiggins got himself an alley on the left side. And he's going to get it all the way up near midfield. Nice return by Shevin Wiggins. Ron Edwards is the guy who had the sack and made the play. He's right here. He's going to stunt around and make the sack right there and force the ball loose. Edwards is one of those young sophomore players that was maybe rushed a year ago, but the benefits of their experience are paying off this year. Holdman says, I'm going to get this one and put seven points for the wrecking crew on the board. And holy cow. Nebraska, the number two team in the nation, is finding out what Kyle Field is all about. From the 49-yard line. And the new quarterback is in. Um, Joel Makovica just got landed on his left leg right it there. Is, it is Nuka, and Makovica gets up. I thought the Cornhuskers were going to bring in Monte Cristo, but they do not. Nukem still out there. He has not been the Bobby Newcomb we've seen, though, in past games. Of course, we had him two weeks ago when he right. just splashed on the scene against Washington in that game. Got it down to the 40-yard line and a first down. Here's a big opening for the fullback. All the way down to the 18-yard line. Makovica comes up limping on one play and goes 22 on the next. First time I've seen in two games that Makovica has been able to find some space with the ball. And you know, this has not been like the Nebraska offense. The aberration is really the Washington game, the only time they've really had a type of a game that you would expect from this Nebraska rush offense. Otherwise, they've all been in the 200 yards rushing except for last week and again this week. It's the longest play of the day, if you can believe it, for Nebraska. The fullback straight up the middle on that last play. At the 18. Newcomb keeps it. Might have gotten inside the 15. That win came over to help on the stop. That was a great play by Dat Win right there. That, that was one where it doesn't really show up as a big hit, but that's a touchdown. If he doesn't get his right arm on Bobby Newcomb's leg that time, Bobby Newcomb's just going to walk into the end zone. And Dat Win, one of 12 semifinalists named today to the Lombardi Trophy, and that trophy is on display here in College Station. Down to 740 in the third. Second down and six. Three wideouts for Nebraska. Newcomb keeps it again, and guess who? Dat Win. He's made a lot of them. In fact, he'll probably be the all-time tackle leader by the time he leaves. Came into this game with 413 career tackles. Johnny Holland is the man that's got the all-time record, and that's got Johnny in his sights. That time, Josh Heskew went to go for the legs of that man, and you're not going to block those quick feet. They're just too quick. At the 11-yard line, there's the tackle numbers on that win in his career. Doesn't want to go down. He goes 
goes down short of the first down, though, and it's decision time for Frank Solich because it's fourth and two. Right, I don't think there's any decision. I think you've got to kick the field goal. Still a lot of time left in this game. I'm going to run the ball right at that win this time, inside. You know, the reason Dad is so good is sometimes he takes the play on, other times he dodges. He never gives that offensive lineman the same look two plays in a row. Mask is going to go for it here. There's the decision. Fearless Frank. 0-1 today, but 3 for 5 on the season on fourth down conversions. They're going to have to earn it. It's about two yards left. And around coming to Wiggins. Hit in the backfield and dropped. Jason Webster stayed home and made the play. How many times do you see a reverse on fourth and one? Here's Webster. He's coming off the corner. Remember on the short yardage situation earlier when Brooks made the tackle coming around the corner? This time Webster stays at home with the backside blitz and the plays run right into him. Aggies with a two touchdown lead and the ball back now. It's the second time today they've taken over on downs against Nebraska. They'll two, work from their own 14. How often on two fourth down plays do your two corners make the play on both of the fourth down plays to stop? Nebraska thinking about a blitz here. And McCown off play action. Wants to throw on the run. Now he's going to keep it. <laughs> Not a lot of faking to do against Nebraska. Nope. <laughs> Fake one guy, three other guys are coming at you like laser beams. <laughs> So the, the crowd momentarily takes a breath. Nobody is sitting down. That's something you have to get used to here, too. We haven't been here since last Thanksgiving when we had about five inches of rain. But nobody sits down in this place, so we have to stand, too, so we can see yeah. over them. Mike Rucker has been quiet at that rush end position. Not a sack this year yet. Here's Hall. That's a Hall, and he found an opening across the 20 and out to the 22. He's only about a yard and a half shy of the first down. Chad Kelsey. Made the hit, Dante Hall, as we said earlier. He's going to have to have a lot of carries to get to 100, yeah. but he's working on it. Watch Daniel Campbell, one of the great tight ends, blocking Rucker right here on this play. Campbell's about 256. We saw him out in practice, a great specimen. He just pushes Rucker all over the field, and that's what causes the big gash on that play. Derek Spiller's the other tight end, but he's a bit nicked. He was even on crutches earlier this week, and it's been all Campbell so far. Third down and two. Little option this time by the Aggies, and McCown's got a first down keeper. Haven't seen much of it, but he's capable of it. Ryan Shaw made the tackle. They'll move the sticks. I always believe to run the ball effectively, you've got to have a tight end that can block. Watch Daniel Campbell this time. He takes on Shaw and actually firms out another guy and blocks out Foreman that time in kind of a rub block. You take one guy and you keep your eyes up for the next man in your position. Secure one, look for the next guy. Well, that's going to get that guy a job in the NFL. You bet it is. That and the size you talked about, 260 plus. The 28. Only about a yard for Dante Hall. No matter how, Kelsey made the tackle. No matter how this drive ends up, it's going to be a successful drive as long as AM can punt it right now. They had the big stop on fourth down. They don't make a first down, and now you got a punter that's going to take you out of position. And they've eaten up probably four minutes off the clock again. It's the best thing Randy McCown has done today, I think, is not make any foolish plays. He had the interception. That was more, I thought, Chris Cole running a bad route than the fourth throw on the play. There's a quarterback. Helping a quarterback. <laughs> Second down, a long eight. Under four minutes in the third quarter. Hodge in motion. Here's the toss. Sir Parker. Whew. Man, did he take a hit to bounce off and get up to the 34-yard line. To run the ball effectively against Nebraska, you have to handle their defensive ends. Here he is again, Daniel Campbell. Watch him just flatten and make a crease, just wall off. Look at the wall right there that that big tight end does on the stunt. Brian Shaw's coming in on a stunt, but your tight end really creates a wall for your running back to run. That's why you gain five yards. Third down at four. Taylor, who's got a touchdown today, in motion to the top of your screen. And here comes Toombs. He almost broke it again. He got a first down. Rucker hit him low, but the big fella who rumbled 
Seventy one yards in the first half to get him close to a touchdown has a first down here. A little bit of a trap action right then following behind Cameron Spikes. Toombs coming in the same play that he no it isn't the same play very similar type call running inside on third down It was more of a veer blocking before this is a trap action following spikes and the big guy puts another movement of the chains out to the 40 where it's first down again. move in the secondary to get it down to the 43 yard line 17 more yards in a hurry and now both backs are closing in on a hundred yard day we saw that offensive line yesterday so focused out there in the walkthrough now one guy even fooling around when you get beat by 54 to 15 in a championship game on national television it has a way of getting your offensive line fired up for the next year's game remember this AM team a year ago in the big 12 championship rushed for just 13 yards. 99 now for Hall, 94 for Toombs. And there, the eye backfield behind McCown on a first and 10. McCown again wanted to throw down the sideline to Oliver, and he'll keep it. Whoever was color, uh, covering Oliver out there grabbed a whole handful of jersey, but no defensive holding call was made. It was a double move that time. They've run a few. Steve Kegthorpe saw the same thing I did. They've run a few of those fades. This time, Cowan faked the fade. He kind of went hitch and go outside to try to get something different to the outside with the receiver. And you said you're right. A little pull by Sweeney that time. It wasn't called. He almost lost that number 16 jersey. Eight plays. All run so far for the Aggies. Down to the 41-yard line and a run. Whistle and a penalty. And it looked like maybe motion on Texas A&M. It's been relatively penalty free today. It especially has been for that offensive line. One holding penalty through the whole game. Against a defense that usually moves and forces you into those things. Got a snap. Ball start on the offense. R.C. Slocum, the winningest coach in Texas A&M history. We talked about what a tremendous record he has at home in his 10 year stay at College Station. But the Aggies have not done well against top 10 opponents. Today they're doing pretty well. 21 to 7 with just over two minutes left in the third quarter. And that time the snap to McCown, I think, is going to get their five yards back. Nice job by Seth McKinney. I still find that a very dangerous play by the center. Because if someone in your backfield is also moving it, they'll just decline the penalty and tack tackle the quarterback. But in this case, it works perfectly. And you're right there, right back where we were. Two and nine against top ten teams. R.C. Slocum's record. But two and two at home. The other one's neutral sites or away games. R.C. told us and has been very publicly with the, uh, his situation in this game. And if they can beat Nebraska, this would push them up to the elite status in the country. Notre Dame leading 20 to 3 over Arizona State with 9.05 left in the third quarter. For those of you who are viewing us, and that game is not on your screen, it's because of a power hit that they've taken in the stadium there. They're working as quickly as possible to try to get you back to the Fighting Irish and Arizona State's game. And they're keeping the clock and the time on the field there. So that game does continue. They didn't stop the game. Only that uh, you're not seeing it right now, but you will be shortly. So in the meantime, Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson and our ABC crew here in College Station, Texas at Kyle Field, where there's an upset in the making. 21 to 7, the Aggies in front of a sold-out crowd leading the number two team in the nation. Third and medium. They've been two for two on their third downs this drive. Sir Parker back in there at the tailback spot. McCown scrambles around, found an opening, he's got a first down. Inside the 20, McCown. First and goal, Texas A&M. Chris Taylor made a big play. Jamar Toombs made a big play. And now Randy McCown makes a big play. Nebraska's in a man-to-man -man coverage situation. No one's looking at the quarterback. 
Mitch McCown breaks the foot line of scrimmage. You can see there's a lot of space. And right down first and goal, Aaron has the ball again. Dante Hall moves his way inside the five, down to about the four yard line. And it's just going to be about killing this third quarter, too. 38 seconds, all that remains. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. By Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Marriott Hotels, Resorts and Suites, we believe when you're comfortable you can do anything. And National Car Rental, so what are you waiting for? Let's go. It's second and goal from the four. The toss. And about a yard gain for Dante Hall before he swarmed under by the Nebraska defense, and that will bring this quarter to a close. Well, the guys that are working construction in the other end zone are going to love this because we're going to switch ends of the field. And it'll be a third and goal situation down in front of those gentlemen to start the fourth quarter. 21 to 7 Aggies, ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Sleek. Sophisticated. Stylish. And yet with an exhilarating V6. Chevy Monte Carlo lets you express that hidden part of your personality, just dying to get out. Mr. Freeman. How are you? Tommy. Monte Carlo. The side you show the world is up to you. Franklin Perry may have the safest house on Bristol Court thanks to Liberty Mutual. Wow. Carnothorus sapetus. That's one mean bush. We have over 500 home safety tips, including how to prevent break-ins. The ancient Greeks called this the bush of pain. Tips like planting prickly bushes under your windows and installing deadbolt locks. Safer, more secure lives. That's the freedom of liberty. Liberty Mutual. Miami meets Jacksonville for the first time. The game takes one night. The bragging rights are forever. Monday at 8 on ABC. We never thought we'd use OnStar for snakes. I just hate snakes. Yeah, uh, traveling through Arizona, we blew a front tire. It shot off the road, and I looked down at the ground. It is crawling with rattlesnakes. It was unbelievable. I pushed the OnStar button. Within seconds, the OnStar advisor pinpointed our location and sent a tow truck. Call the paramedics. Yeah, and kept talking, because we... I hate snakes. Yeah. Now, get the OnStar system and installation at no extra charge when you sign up for a year of service. Call 1-888-ONSTAR-7. From Dalhart to Brownsville, El Paso to Texarkana, David Dewhurst is talking to Texans. What does the land office do? The land office earns hundreds of millions of dollars every year for public education. I'll make improving public education my top priority. As a proven conservative businessman, I'll work hard as your next land commissioner to earn more money from our state lands for public education. For Texas, the choice is clear. David Dewhurst, a George Bush Republican for land commissioner. The Aggies, the Cougars, and the Longhorns tonight at 6.30 on Extra Points. Well, there's still a power problem in Tempe. Arizona State is down to Notre Dame. 14-3 is the score there. Now 21-3 as the Irish have added a touchdown. Autry Denson, two yards out, takes it in. 21-3. We'll keep you up to date, but right now let's get you back out to Nebraska and Texas A&M. John, it is 21 to 7 here as we start the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson with you. An upset, a huge upset in the making as 18th ranked Texas A&M leading number two Nebraska. As big as that stop was last week against Oklahoma State is as big as this stop will be for the Nebraska defense. They must force a field goal here. Hall a tailback. Two tight ends set. Mo Spiller and Campbell in there. On a third and goal. for the score. There's been so much kissing going on, you're going to want to switch seats around here. <laughs> I wish I'd have brought my wife. Yeah. <laughs> One play into the fourth quarter. 
And Russell Bynum's extra point makes it a shocking 28 to 7 AM. You think they're not trying to pay back Nebraska for the Big 12 title game last year? They are on their way. Because there is a man in Chicago planning his retirement this year. Because there is a family in Boston who hopes to send their kids to college someday. Because there is a doctor in New York looking forward to the day she will open her own clinic. Because the dreams of every investor continue to change in a complex world, so too have we. Which is why at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Afraid your next get-together will be a flop? Order Chili's Party Platters. Act now. Call a Chili's representative, and your guests will flip over party-sized servings of buffalo wings, fajitas, baby back ribs, and more. And pre-party stress now. Order Chili's Party Platters new from Chili's. You're born. You die. In between, you work on cars. We should all be so lucky. I understand you got a bug problem. <laughs> Daddy! I want you to meet my friends. Dad, phone call. Who's the IOS? Sir, is this your son? <laughs> is this your dog? Your life is full of worries. Your car shouldn't be. Get a Chevy Lumina. It's reliable, comfortable, and it's one less thing to worry about. Sir, is this your house? Heck, Lumina can even save you a thousand bucks. Sir? play into the fourth quarter we didn't necessarily think that they were going to have to be cleaning off that many footballs in the end zone following extra point kicks by just, Texas A&M. this guy spiral well he's got a nice arm. He's coming school. back. He's an option quarterback look at that. There it is overthrew his receiver by just a little. All right in Texas you get three off for being able to throw like that there's so many guys <laughs> playing college football. Now we can't come back to the state of Texas <laughs> to do a game. What a shocker huh? Wow. Still a long way to go but on the short end by three touchdowns. Now the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The kick deep in the end zone. Wiggins will touch it down, and the Huskers will go to work at the 20-yard line. Again, 21 to three. Notre Dame leading Arizona State. And for those of you expecting to have seen that game in your area, a power outage has caused the switch over to our game. We're working on it. Our ABC crews working on it to try to get you. Your picture and your game back in the meantime, the picture you're seeing, you don't have to rub your eyes. It's not blurry. It is 28 to 7, Texas AM over number two, Nebraska. Bobby Newcomb got about three on the keeper. Royland Bradley in on the tackle. And now Nebraska is going to have to start getting it in some bigger chunks. They just don't have enough time left. And again, AM would be very, very happy right now with taking away the tailback. And forcing Newcomb and Makovica to run in the ball all day. Bobby Newcomb has been hit and hit hard every time he's run the ball. He said against Oklahoma State was his most physical and mental test that he's had so far. I think, I think it's today now. Yeah, he's going to have a new one today. Second down at seven. Nice play fake. There goes a bigger chunk, but he got his man too, and it's Davison. Well, Davison's been his favorite receiver today, and that time. Cuts it loose for 48 yards. Well, Warwick Holdman that time put a little pressure on Bobby Newcomb, but Bobby held into the pocket. Davidson's going to come down here and run the post route. Decent coverage this time. Jason Webster goes for the ball. Great concentration. And Davidson may pull this game out himself again. Well, <laughs> he pulled out the game against Missouri, of course, last year. He's got 100 yards on six catches today. Now they go back to the ground game. Straight ahead. Akavica has about five. So Nebraska is working down toward that red zone again, which has given them so much success on the season, but not much success today. Only one touchdown, and that was by Corral Buckhalter. Second down and five here. Huskers at the Aggies 23 yard line. Newcomb decides to keep it and paid the price. Dat Win and Royland Bradley 
made a Newcomb sandwich. And it's third down. One of the things you notice about this A&M defense, the more you watch it in this game, is that Nebraska doesn't knock any of them down. They all reach, but watch the A&M guys. They keep their feet. They dodge blocks. They keep running. They keep going, and all of a sudden, somebody in pursuit makes a play. Not one of the 11 guys for that A&M defense that time was knocked on the ground. No pancakes here. No pancakes. They're going to be surf on this play. Some scrambled eggs at the end of it, maybe. <laughs> Third down, short five. 12.45 left in the ballgame. Newcomb fires over the outstretched arms of Davison. And now on fourth and five. Does Nebraska go for it again? They're 0 well, for 2 on their fourth down conversions. Know, They're not going to get many chances. No, but uh, Frank Solich, uh, I know he didn't hear me, but he didn't listen to my advice last time. I thought he should have kicked the field goal and put some points on the board when they still were in the ball game. Just gave too much momentum to that AM team not kicking that field goal. And now, obviously, fourth and five and down three touchdowns, you have to go for it. Sheldon Jackson's been a kind of a quiet tight end, too. He just came back in with the play from the bench. Another fourth down. Nuka delivers it. Davison can't hold it. Oh, that's a great play. Great play by Jason Webster that time. The third time a corner has made the play on fourth down Isn't in this game. Amazing? Jay Brooks the first time, Jason Webster on the last fourth down, and Jason Webster again comes up and makes the play. And that pass was on the money, but it was just too good a play by number 39. Just browsing. Stallone, Antonio Banderas. For two assassins, the real competition is about to begin. I'm going to tear your heart out. Assassins, ABC Thursday. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame still have the 21-3 lead over Arizona State. There's also still some problems, electrical trouble out there. We will get you out there if we can. 21-3 to update the score. But right now, back for more of the upset of the day, A&M and Nebraska. Definitely the upset of the day in the making. Texas A&M leading 28-7 over number two, Nebraska. And Jamar Toombs has just gone over the 100-yard mark. He had a 71-yarder earlier in the ball game. He had a touchdown rumble the last time the Aggies had the ball, and now he just knocks one out of there for about nine more yards. And it's second down and one. Sir Parker now in a tailback. So all three backs have done their job today, especially Hall and Toombs. Toombs again. As they yell Toombs here at Kyle Field. <laughs> Takes Jay Foreman with him out for a first down to this the 35-yard line. This is going to get fun the next four years around here. Well, this is a look at the last national championships in Nebraska. And you can see they're right about on mark defensively. You know, they had that aberration against the Louisiana Tech giving up all those yards. But there's been their averages uh, in their national championship years. Today, though, it's been all A&M on the ground, and that's been the difference in this game. 200-yard rushers they've seen today. Something almost unheard of against the Nebraska defense. Here comes the other guy that's got over 100, Dante Hall. Five more. Clint Finley made the tackle, and now the Aggies content to just eat up yardage and eat up the clock. Don't forget, next Saturday at 3.30, here's the games you see. Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Texas Tech and Colorado, Purdue and Penn State, the Big Ten, a key matchup in the Pac-10. Virginia and Georgia Tech, that's where we'll be in Atlanta for a big battle in the ACC. Check your local listings for the game in your area or call your cable or satellite company for the games available on pay-per-view. This is one you'd pay to watch. Texas A&M at home trying to pull a stunner. McCown. <laughs> That one almost looked like it uh, was blown up from the start. Rucker yep. made the tackle. He went the wrong way. Both backs, Toombs and Parker went to the right. Quarterback goes to the left. That's never a good feeling. We saw know? Newcomb do that for Nebraska earlier in the game. There's Dante's numbers. 
both Toombs and Hall have now rushed for 109 yards in the game. Almost unheard of versus a Nebraska defense. AM now has run the ball 18 straight times. And why not? A team that only gained 13 yards against this defense a year ago is piling up in the running game. Great day for the offensive line. Big Jim R stays in there. And a wing to the right side as the fullback. And it goes to Sir Parker. And Parker with a big hit. Texas A&M did what they wanted to do, held on to the football, used some clock, and now they'll punt. You almost think that the only thing that could save Nebraska is a huge play by somebody like Joe Walker, or blocking a punt possibly. But A&M with those 19 straight running plays just took half the quarter off the clock. 9.30. All that's left in the ball game. Leckler. Another knuckleball to Wiggins, one of the up guys will feel. And Wiggins, only about four yards on the return. Nebraska's in a huge heap of trouble. 28 to 7. The marvel of its aerodynamics, the sheer exhilaration of takeoff. talking about it. Welcome to Fantasy Island. They've seen it. You can be beautiful just like that. The all-new Fantasy Island, ABC Tonight, 9, 8 Central. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson with you in College Station. An upset in the making at Kyle Field. That win said it was a once-in-a-lifetime chance to play in a game like this. Came back for a game just like this, and he might be making true on that chance. Cashing in. Aggies are making the most of it right now. Empty backfield. Newcomb had it tipped at the line by Warwick Holdman. How many big plays can that kid make? <laughs> Enough to give a 21-point lead. It has been a game of big plays, not just on offense. It's been the fourth down plays. The first one by Jay Brooks. The next one by Jason Webster on the reverse. And in the last one again by Jason Webster on the pass play. Newcomb in the open field on the broken play. And he's got a first down. Bobby runs out of bounds at the 38. We were mentioned in the last one. Webster comes up and strips that ball away from Davidson to make another play on the fourth down play. So Newcomb picks up the first down, stops the clock with 9.07 remaining in the ball game. But Nebraska has to score often and quickly, or they will see a 40-game regular season conference win streak and the longest winning streak in the country stopped here in College Station, Texas today. From the 39, Newcomb loads and goes long on the left side for Davison. Did he make the catch? A great catch, and they give it to him at the 22-yard line. <laughs> nice hands. Great hands. Now you understand why Davidson was able to take that one off the shoot tops to win that game. He's got great hands, doesn't he? His first start as a Cornhusker because Cheatham's out with the injury, and there's, there it is. Yep, there's wow. the catch. His left foot came down. Great job by the official making sure his foot came down first. He finds the foot. Then he looks up to make sure he's got the ball. Did all the things right. Good catch. 140 yards on seven catches for Matt. Taking over for Kenny Cheatham, who's out a couple of weeks with a shoulder injury. Newcomb, pitch, Davis. D'Angelo got down to the 14-yard line. Anthony tracked him down there. Pick up of eight. Clock is under nine minutes. We've got a couple big plays by Bobby Newcomb. Not a lot, but a couple. A couple big plays by Joel McEvick. Not a lot, but a couple. But we haven't had anything big from the tailback. And remember, you asked Frank Solich yesterday, would you take a game of big plays? And he said, only if there's a lot of them. Otherwise, I'd rather move the chains. Hasn't they haven't either. done either today. <laughs> haven't done either, have Second down and two. Newcomb keeps it and should get the first down. Ron Edwards made the stop. You know, we talk about Bobby Newcomb and, and 
what he's like. You know, he's very fast, very quick, great athlete, played wing back a year ago, but he does not have the size of Scott Frost or Tommy Frazier. Right. And I think part of the game plan that AM came in with this game was let's punish this guy, just like it may be a good passing game. You're going to catch the ball, but we're going to hit you. That's what they've done to Bobby Newcomb all day. You're going to make some yards, but we're going to make you hit. We're going to hit you all day. They had a great red zone average going. Quarterback draw by Newcomb, and he might score. He does. Touchdown, Bobby Newcomb. 11 yards on the quarterback draw. dialed one that worked right here. That win kind of overran the play. Bobby used his good ability to cut and run around. Michael James got a hit on it a little late. Finally, Nebraska, perhaps a little late, puts one in the end zone again. Try to make it 28 to 14 here. I think we're going to see an onside kick, too. Chris Brown gets the extra point. With 8.08 left, Luka finally gets Nebraska in the end zone again, but still a lot of ground to make up. Good call. A champion's pedigree. We are a company built on engineering mastery. 300 gives us an all-out engineering car. It has put real fire and spirit into the whole job we do. Introducing the all-new 99 Chrysler 300M Sport Sedan. It's unique, and it's exciting, and it's a basic automotive experience. The most horsepower, the most torque, and the widest stance in its class. The Chrysler 300M. The technology has changed, but the soul lives on. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler. Engineered to be great cars. State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. And Miller who remind you to enjoy Miller Lite with friends. We've got about 58,000 of our friends here with us watching an upset in the making with 8.08 left, but Nebraska set for, I would assume, an onside kick. Yep, there's nine men in the box right there. Ready for that onside kick for AM. They have deployed their defense to try to discourage Kim, uh, Nebraska from doing it. They're going to kick away. Chases Dante Hall back to the goal line on one hop. Decides to play it safe and takes a knee. And AM will go to work from the 20 yard line. At the conclusion of today's game, Gary and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game for each team. In recognition of these athletes, Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. Nebraska defense must have a three and out if they have any opportunity to win this game, I believe. Charlie McBride has been gambling, got burned a couple times, but it's the style of defense they play now. That win gets a breather as Randy McCown and the Aggies offense takes over. It's like they're thinking about a blitz here. It's Dante Hall, and he goes out to the 25, a pickup of five. Let's go to our New York studios and John Saunders, John. Brad, we have news from Tempe, Tempe, rather. The power is back on, so Arizona State and Notre Dame, they are back playing again. It's 21-3, to but because of the outstanding upset that we have, Texas A&M leading Nebraska, we are going to stay with that game. We'll keep you up to date on the other one. Right now, back to Brad. All right, John, seven and a half to play, 28-14. to Here's the eighth man right here up in the box. Dante Hall dropped the ball, but he got back on it. That's just the kind of play Texas A&M could not afford, but Hall, and you could hear this huge <laughs> sigh of relief go out in Kyle Field. We, we felt the stands rock yeah. when they do their little, you know, the song and everything, and now we just felt the air just sucked out of this place. There. <laughs> <laughs> Brings up a third down, key third down. As Gary said, Nebraska needs a stop here on third and seven. Sir Parker checks into the backfield, and Hall will come out. 
can never count Nebraska out of a football game. They've come from behind one tight games in the past. These are athletes that are used to winning football games. AM right now is being a bit conservative. It'll be tough to pick up this first down. McCown calls a timeout. With 6.41 left, they used all the clock they could and then took a timeout to talk it over. Key third down for both teams coming up when we come back. Because of our passion for design and engineering, our vehicles speak for themselves. Warning you. Wes Craven presents Don't Look Down, the Halloween event to die for. <laughs> Nebraska was number one last year, number two coming in, and right now trailing 28 to 14. I don't think you'll see anything fancy. Nebraska's going to be in an end rush. Let's see if they drop their alignment outside. Zone blitz. Third they down do. and seven, quarterback draw, McCown. Kelsey got him by the ankles and lost his helmet to boot, but made the play Nebraska absolutely had to have. And an injured Cornhusker down, I think it's Julius Jackson, in the backfield. They have not had any injuries today up until now either. And this will really have no effect on the clock. Bottom line in this one, we yeah. talked about how great Ooh. Nebraska was in the red zone coming in. They were 20 of 22, four possessions today, and twice lost it on downs. Right. And you look at each one of those things, all four going against Nebraska, that equals 28 and a big L when it happens. Everything going against Nebraska still have an opportunity to pull it out. But when those type of things, two rushers for 100 yards, Jackson's going to come around the outside right here. Going to be right in the middle of your screen. I think he's right here is what's going to happen. I think its own guy gets him. Yes, it is. Leg whip, ouch. Leg whip from his own guy that time, coming from the other side. And Aaron Willis he ran into Mike uh, Julius Jackson. Julius, uh, junior out of Gainesville, Texas, so playing in his home states. And they'll help him off. Meanwhile, Nebraska will be getting the football back. Fourth top five opponent in eight games, and all of them until today have been losses, and there's still some time left in this one. But part of that also, that Big 12 championship last year, 54 to 15. Is there some huge payback from that one coming right here if this game holds? I still think, I mean, they could get a great stop against Nebraska, but I really got to believe if I'm the offense right now and I'm the quarterback, Randy McCown, I'm telling my offense to win this game, we're going to have to make two first downs. We just can't depend on the defense to hold on the whole game. Remember, Joe Walker's a game breaker. He's waiting on this punt from Leckler. And Leckler got a dandy. Walker to the 22. And up to the 34. About 12 yards on the return. And Nebraska, the last time they had it, went 76 yards in a minute and 11 seconds. They've got to do that same type of thing right here. Tuesday night on ABC. D.L. Hughley stars in one of the nation's best new comedies. See what happens from the Hughleys. They move from the hood to the birds Tuesday night, 8.30, 7.30 Central Time, right here on ABC. Now everybody up waving the Aggie towels. And Nebraska works from its own 34-yard line. Bobby Newcomb from the shotgun. Throws complete to Davison, who's been the big playmaker today. Pick up a seven. Davison's on his way to a 200-yard receiving game, and they keep throwing it to him on this drive. He got out of bounds with 6.03 left. Not a bad first start, but I think Matt would trade in all those stats for a win here today. Just outside the 40. Second down along three. Newcomb goes the other way. This one's complete. First down. We'll stop the clock momentarily as they move the sticks to midfield. Billy Hafke with another catch. And now Nebraska's got to hustle and be ready on the snap as soon as those chains are reset at the midfield strike. They stay in the four wide out grouping. D'Angelo Evans in the backfield with Newcomb. 
there's a dangerous one incomplete. Nice play on the ball by Jay Brooks on a pass intended again for Davis. First time in the game that AM's defense has looked confused. A lot of guys look at each other at the snap that time. They looked a little bit gassed. I think Mike Hankwitz is going to have to get some guys in there that are a little fresher bodies. Less than six minutes see left. Shaking his head. He's not happy with his alignment. Second and ten. Newcomb pump fakes. Look out for behind. Nails it. He throws and it's incomplete. Royal and Bradley got him. The toughest thing to do in this situation is to rush the passer. It takes so much out of you. Get so much effort to get to the guy. You run, you run, you run. Maybe 25, 30 yard sprints. Bradley gets there and you don't even get a sack just as he lets the ball go. Just takes your heart out of you. You're just heaving right now. Third and ten. Nebraska only three of 13 on third downs. Newcomb try to keep it and get to the stick and he got there and got the corner. He also got out of bounds. Used every amount of energy he could playing continuing to play on a bad knee and he used all the speed he had left to get that one and this was a called play you'll see the guard and the tackle pull and run the play from the backside this is called all the way it's a counter play with the quarterback Bobby Newcomb running the ball get the corner got it down to the 30 yard line still plenty of time five and a half minutes to go in the game Newcomb caught at the 25 yard line by Wiggins Michael Jamison was there with him. Michael Jamison is gassed, too. He can barely get up off the ground. Look at him. Got no energy. It's the pressure of the situation. You know you don't want to make a mistake. Newcomb throws it out again, complete to Hafke, and another first down. So marching down the field again, another pickup of seven. Remember what Frank Solich told us when we visited with him. He said, most coaches come and talk to us about one thing. How do you practice? This, all that offense they've got so much offense and now look at this an option team they're in four wide outs and they're moving the ball down the field they've moved it down the red zone again at the 18 yard line Newcomb shovel past D'Angelo Evans and Evans is inside the 10 clock running down near the five minute mark a touchdown here puts Nebraska back in the game and only trailing by a score Telling you, the AM offense is going to have to make a first down to ice this game. Newcomb barking the signals to his wideouts. Looking left all the way and throws it away. Smart play, stops the clock. And it'll be second and ten. I think it's third and No, third it's third, and, yes. third, excuse me, third and one. So they need the first down, then they can worry about the goal to go situation. There's Randy McCowan, this quarterback coach, Coach Dora right there. He's got his arm around him saying, Coach, I know what we need. We got to have a couple first downs. We got to pick up the onside kick and make a couple first downs and finish the game on offense. Well, it's two down territory, obviously. So Nebraska has got two shots at picking up a yard. They want to get it in the end zone. They might right here. Makovica, touchdown. That's a huge play. That's a huge play. Gain that much yardage. Puts the clock at 439, 438 left in the game. And down now only seven or eight points. Holy cow. 28 to 20 extra point coming. Here's Makovica, the bowling fullback. That time it was overrun inside by Cornelius Anthony. Nobody blocked him. Went too far outside, playing the option play. Flip the fullback right inside. Big extra point by Chris Brown, but he's hit 107 in a row, 108 in a row, and we've got a one touchdown ball game. Well, the last two times Nebraska's had it, they took 111 to score and 129 to score, and they're back in it. In them less than two and a half minutes. They put up two touchdowns and they only trail now 28 21. Looks like they're going to kick it deep again. It worked last time. This time, smartly, he doesn't kick it in the end zone either, forcing a return. Dante Hall from the nine. 
And Dante out across the 20 to the 21 yard line. Well, you mentioned two touchdowns, one on a quarterback draw, big yardage near the red zone. Very surprising to be able to run the ball from the 12 yard line and pick a touchdown. And then again on third and one to hand to the fullback. And the big fella takes it over there for another touchdown. You would suspect that it would take you four or five plays to score and take more off the clock. Now, like I said, Randy McCown has to get in that huddle and say, guys, we run the ball all game. Two first downs and we win the football game. Here's the game down to the last four and a half minutes. AM clinging now to a one touchdown lead. Ooh, the ball bottled in the backfield by Hall, and he loses a couple. Just to give you an example, what happens when you get way ahead? That's the 23rd straight run for AM. Since they went up by 21 points in this game, here's what their series have been five plays, one first down and a punt, three and out. And now they got second and 13. They have not thrown the ball in 23 straight plays. McCown only his third start as the quarterback of the Aggies. Hall out across the original line of scrimmage, but not by much. It's going to be third down and almost 10. place that about five minutes ago was so loud with the stadium moving that you couldn't hear yourself think and right now I could probably yell down about 50 right. rows Ab to somebody and they'd hear me absolutely people as nervous as you can be around here everybody in the room right now is nervous and the people in the bright red are still in the bright sunshine and hoping that their team can come back to tie this game up here's a huge third down and 10 for McCown they're bringing the heat but the whistles blow the play dead Pass play too. If it's on AM, I predict they don't throw on the third and long. Delay a game on the offense. Five yard penalty. So it's going to be third and 15. You talked about it way back in the third quarter the tendency, especially if you get a lead, to go in a shell offensively and not do enough attacking to win a game this big. Especially when you got a new quarterback. I mean, you know, Randy McCown is still at a second start. You got a big lead. Your defense has been playing well. Let's try to clip it close to the vest, but now all of a sudden, third and 14. McCown steps up, fires in the middle, and he threw a perfect pass, and Leroy Hodge couldn't hold it. And a penalty marker flies in way after the play. I mean, four seconds after the play. I don't think I blame Frank Solich. Maybe it was a penalty, but either he couldn't get it out of his pocket, or it's not going to be what I think it was. But I mean, that flag, that people were heading to the sideline before Absolutely. that flag hit the turf. Hunter was halfway on the field. Come on, guys, fix it. Make the call. Let the players win the game. This is going to be a huge call. Steve Usacek, the referee, and both coaches anxiously await the call, as we do, as you do, and as these two teams that have battled they're for all, 57 minutes. Right now they're all asking each other, what did you see? You get three different versions. Let's see what happens. Pass interference, Nebraska. Now, Nebraska's down, but there's still three minutes left in this game. And they still have three timeouts. Now they'll be forced to use them. Here's the play. And you know, I think that's a pretty good call. Ralph Brown had his hands on the receiver that time. I think he was all over him. As there's the break, there's Ralph Brown's hands on it. And I think that's a good call. I don't care how long it was late. You still didn't see the flag come in at the end of the no, play. The so you know how long there. it took. He's nervous too. Great throw on the play. Ralph Brown actually held him before the ball got there. But AM, what did I say? They needed two defense. first downs. Football. Automatic first down. They needed two first downs. That's one. They're That's not one. out of the woods yet. No, they're not. Nebraska now will use their timeouts. Of which they have three remaining. Nope. 307 left. No taking a knee yet. Sir Parker's the tailback. Gets the carry. Took a lick at the 35. Nebraska will take their timeouts, I'm sure of it. 
Corbin. And there it is. Tony Ortiz. Comes number one. You're in enough of these games when you play football, especially as a quarterback, you can just see these things happening. And there's no doubt in my mind that every team has a chance to win a game. There's always a chance both teams have late in the game to win it, unless it's a big, big blowout. We'll have a chance to see a couple pretty good football games coming up this weekend. Your exclusive home for primetime NFL, ESPN on Sunday night at 8.15. An NFC showdown between the Giants and the Atlanta Falcons. And then on Monday night on ABC Sports, Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins once beaten tackle the undefeated Jacksonville Jaguars. That's at 8 o'clock on Monday night on ABC. Well, why isn't Jamar Toombs getting the ball? I don't know. He's been the big horse in you this bet. game. Let's slip the ball to the fullback. That has worked earlier in this type of situation when Nebraska is gambling with their linebackers. Fake the pitch, do one of those little traps, and slip the ball to this fullback right here who's tough to tackle. The ball is at the 35-yard line with a second down and seven coming up and just under three minutes to play. A nervous Cornhusker sideline, obviously. They have won 19 straight games, the longest streak in Division 1A. All the linebackers are up tight. Let's see if they give the ball to the fullback. They do. There he comes. And he goes down after about... A one-yard gain. Mike Rucker made first contact. Chad Kelsey, the other, rush in, pinched in there to make the stop. Here's what we're talking about. 19 straight wins, 40 straight in conference play. And they've won 65 of their last 68. That is a mouthful. That is about as good as you get. Coming in here to Kyle Field. I think this is exactly what A&M and Texas were looking for. It was a game like this. High-profile team like a Colorado and Nebraska coming into this, and Oklahoma coming into a game like this, meaning everything and having your fans this excited to watch this type of game. This would make the Aggies the favorite in the Big 12 South to reach the championship game at St. Louis this year. It would make Kansas State the favorite in the North to arrive there if they can upset Nebraska. been a day to drum about as AM is hoping to drum up the biggest upset of the college football season so far 28 to 21 they lead but we have 253 left and they're going to have to get a first down here to not give it back to the Cornhuskers of Nebraska seven long yards the quarterback what do you call do you take a chance third and about that much to finish this game that's a long ways right now against Nebraska. He'll keep it on the ground. Hall got back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Lauren Kaiser was there as he has been so many times today. And now A&M's got to give it up. How about that? You can't ask for anything better. Mike Rucker made the play. He made it last week. Mike Rucker were forced to play back inside. There he is, number 84, Daniel Campbell. He'll go outside. Force it back into his players where he knows that pursuit's going to make the play. That's good rush in play to the outside. Leckler comes in to punt. Joe Walker waits on it on the other end. Basically, Walker won the game for Nebraska last week with a 73 yard return against Oklahoma State. And he's waiting on it in the sunshine at the 10 yard line. Leckler. Oh boy, did he hit all. Walker has to let it go. Couldn't afford to field it inside the five-yard line and try to do something with it. Well, that's got what? That's 63 60, yards. 63-yarder with no return like that. Puts it in the end zone. That's as good as you can ask. Bobby Newcomb's numbers have increased dramatically in the second half when they needed to, but he's still got 80 yards of turf to cover to try to tie the game up with exactly two minutes left. We don't have a two-minute warning in college football, but this is your two-minute drill this right here. This is the two-minute drill. Don't get off the couch now. And let's see how fresh the AM defense can stay as they try to play the clock and this full wide receiver offense led by Bobby Newcomb. From the 20, Newcomb comes up firing, and Hafke, the intended receiver, has it knocked down by Jay Brooks. Yeah, but they're going to be offsides. It's going to be first and five, Nebraska. Look like it might have been Flemons out there on the outside. I think you're right. He jumped off. 
So a five yard walk off. Dat Win was under the impression it was on Nebraska. It's on Texas A&M. Dat's going the other way. Upside. Defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Dat Win has not come up with that play in this game. The big turnover. He had an interception and a fumble recovery last week. Will the All-American linebacker make the play to make this? He's got eight tackles, but he hasn't made that big play yet. That has been his signature. From the shotgun. Newcomb over the middle. Oh, hit London right in the hands, and he dropped it. Frankie might have been worried a little bit about the wrecking crew he was about to meet in the secondary. <laughs> yeah, but at, at this point of the game, you can't cough those up. You have to wonder if Newcomb will try to go back to Matt Davison, number three, who's been his main target all day long. Davison is up to the left side at the top of your screen. Newcomb fires out complete. Davison trying to get out of bounds. Did he? No, nope, but it's still going to stop. It's still going to stop while they move the chains. First start for Matt Davison. What a way to make a first start. Got to have close, what, nine and ten catches? Nine for 156. Not bad, but not enough so far. Still 66 yards away from a tie football game. Newcomb wanted to throw long. Now he's going to tuck it, get what he can, which is basically back to the line of scrimmage as Royland Bradley ran him out of bounds. And we're down to 138 left. AM has stayed in the zone defense, trying to force Nebraska to throw the things in front of it. Had the seat pass down right in here with the slot guy, but Bobby never saw him. You see it right about there. He had the seam right there, wide open. That's what it's going to take. It's going to fit. It's going to take one of those fit passes right in between the guys. This is the kind of drive Nebraska had to have against Oklahoma State last week. It's the kind of drive they had to have against Missouri to go and win in overtime last year, and they're still trying to put one together here. 127 left. Still plenty of time also. Mike Hankowitz playing the clock, playing the Nebraska offense, trying to hope that somebody will make a play on defense. From the gun at the 45. Minute and a half to go. Nebraska trails by a touchdown. The out complete and out of bounds at midfield goes Billy Hafke. And the little used senior has been used a lot today due to injury situations. Remember, they're without Lance Brown. Their normal wing back, who's Kenny, been out basically all year, Kenny and then Kenny Cheatham right. out two weeks with a bad shoulder, and now we got a penalty. I think, I think that was an illegal chop play, I think, at the end of the line of scrimmage that time that really got Bobby outside the pocket. So instead of a second down and five at midfield. On the end man that time, we got to hold him. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty. Spot of the foul, repeat first down. So the spot of the foul, and it backs it all the way up to the 32-yard line. They lost 18 yards on what could have been. Sheldon Jackson, the tight end's back in there. He's been quiet all day long. They'll keep it on the ground. Out to the 40 goes D'Angelo Evans, but the clock down to 115. One group hustles out the wide receiving core. Still 1.27 left. Lucas fires out complete. Davison trying to get out of bounds. Did he? Nope, but it's still going to stop. It's still going to stop while they move the chains. First start for Matt Davison. What a way to make a first start. He's got to have close, what, nine and ten catches? Nine for 156. Not bad, but not enough so far. Still 66 yards away from a tie football game. Newcomb wanted to throw long. Now he's going to tuck it, get what he can, which is basically back to the line of scrimmage as Royland Bradley ran him out of bounds. 
And we're down to 138 left. AM has stained in the zone defense, trying to force Nebraska to throw the things in front of it. Had the seat pass down right in here with the slot guy, but Bobby never saw him. You see it right about there. He had the seam right there, wide open. That's what it's going to take. It's going to fit. It's going to take one of those fit passes right in between the guys. This is the kind of drive Nebraska had to have against Oklahoma State last week. It's the kind of drive they had to have against Missouri to go and win in overtime last year, and they're still trying to put one together here with 127 left. Still plenty of time also. Mike Hankowitz playing the clock, playing the Nebraska offense, trying to hope that somebody will make a play on defense. From the gun at the 45. Minute and a half to go. Nebraska trails by a touchdown. The out complete and out of bounds at midfield. 